Chapter 90 Treatment, 3, You are listening at NovelFull.audio Treatment, 3, What do you mean by that? Gu Ryungwa suddenly opened the door and appeared. Why did she have to come now out of all times? Damn it! I had been hoping that she wouldn't come today. Gu Ryungwa asked with an excited tone the moment she saw me. Is it true? That you can cure Master? I'm not certain. How can you do such a thing? When even, the immortal healer gave up on it. Remembering the fact that the immortal healer was right next to her caused Gu Ryungwa to be careful with her words. If I were to be honest, there was no guarantee that the sword master would be cured just because I absorbed the demonic chi that was inside her. However, even after I'd said that it might be possible for me to cure her, I kept wondering to myself. Whether or not me involving myself in this was the right move. If I just left the sword master like this, I knew that she would die. And even if a miracle happened and she lived, she would most likely just live quietly while hiding herself from the world. I knew all of this because that was what had happened in my past life. The future had already changed slightly due to my selfishness, but something like this was on a whole different scale. The sword master being alive and well was just that significant. So. I wonder, is it really right to change the future like this? Although, there's also the chance that she will become a helper in the future when disaster strikes my thoughts were all over the place. Even though I might just using be this thought as an excuse to save her. Yeah, I was just giving myself an excuse to save her. I was trying to convince myself no matter what. I'm being selfish even at a time like this. I knew that I needed to act with certainty if I wanted to change the world, but I found myself hesitating again and again. I looked at Gu Ryungwa and saw the nervousness written all over her face, as well as her quivering eyes. She knew that my words were absurd, but even still, the tiny bit of hope she was now holding onto due to my words was clear to see. It really showed me once again that, at the end of the day, Gu Ryungwa was still a young girl who was soft. After looking at her, I spoke again. If you allow me, I would like to attempt to cure the sword master. The immortal healer shouted back at me, still clearly displeased by my words. You are crossing the line. How can you cure someone when you've never learned any medical skills? Do you know how sinful it is for you to give hope to a patient who is dying? I could understand why the immortal healer was saying those words. To someone like him, my words were very obviously absurd. And if I was in his shoes, I would have most likely had the same reaction. The sword master, in the middle of this, just continued to quietly gaze into my eyes. Even though she was still fighting the demonic chi that was inside her body, instead of frowning because of pain, she looked calm. The sword master then asked me. I would like you to explain clearly what this is. Sword Master. The immortal healer called out to the sword master in shock, as it seemed like the sword master was willing to hear my words. I took it as her approval to let me speak and so let out the words I had come up with in my mind. The Chi of the Gu clan members allows the user to get rid of any turbid energy within their body. No one interrupted my words. And as I saw that no one wanted to interrupt me, I continued. In my eyes, the disease that is slowly killing the sword master is some sort of chi that is inside her. Isn't that correct? I asked the immortal healer. The immortal healer's expression displayed his shock after hearing my question. He didn't deny my words, and his expression made it seem like he was agreeing with me. He couldn't tell that there was demonic chi inside my body, but could see it in the sword master's body. I put aside that thought for now. I had to focus on the current situation. When I held the sword master's hand, I checked and noticed that I can purify the turbid energy that is inside her. To be more accurate, I was absorbing it, but I believed that saying that would only cause more harm than good. When I mentioned what happened when I held her hand, the sword master fell into deep thought as she had also felt that something had happened back then. The Chi of the Gu clan obviously didn't have such an ability, but I had to come up with something to make myself seem more convincing. Grab. 
When I turned to the direction of the sensation I felt, I saw Gu Ryungwa firmly holding on to my clothes. See that can you really save master? Gu Ryungwa's hands were shaking. Like I said before, I'm not cert. Save her, my master. Please save her, brother, I sighed inside my mind after seeing her tearing up. There was no way I didn't know what sort of emotions she was going through. Geez, she only calls me a brother whenever she needs something from me. But, thanks to Gu Ryungwa, I felt that involving myself with this wasn't the worst choice. Then the immortal healer asked me. I'd never heard that the Chi of the Gu clan could do such a thing. And do you think you can achieve something that not even Doa, the celestial plum blossom couldn't? The immortal healer was right. The celestial plum blossom who was the greatest Taoist, hadn't been able to get rid of the turbid energy inside her, and that was why he had called the immortal healer here. And yet I was saying that I could cure such a thing out of nowhere. I was about to speak, to respond to the immortal healer, but the sword master who had previously been silently ruminating spoke up at that juncture. Wouldn't it be, okay to let him try? You. It is better to do something than just sit still and do nothing. And, like the child said, I felt my body change when I held his hand. Even with the chance that he can get rid of the turbid energy inside you, I can't just leave a child to do such an important task, and the little time you have in you might disappear because of this. The sword master smiled at the immortal healer's worry. As if she was saying that she was okay with it. I already know that I don't have much time left. So I want to trust my belief. The immortal healer let out a deep sigh after hearing the sword master. He wanted to convince her of how dangerous this could be, but the sword master had already made up her mind. The immortal healer, on seeing her expression, knew that he couldn't do anything about it anymore. Can you really do it? And so he turned to ask me. He still had a bit of doubt in his voice. My response was the same as before. I'm not certain. I'll have to try. It may sound arrogant, but even I couldn't do it. I'm saying this not only because I doubt you, but you also have to think about the burden and responsibility you will have on your shoulders. To save someone. To feel the joy of saving someone, you also had to be prepared to feel the burden you would face if you couldn't. The immortal healer was asking me if I could endure the pain I would feel if I failed. I smiled inside my head after hearing the immortal healer. Whether it was the celestial plum blossom or the immortal healer. They kept reminding me of the second elder. They had something in them that just reminded me of the second elder, I believe that I can't just sit here and do nothing when there is a chance that I might be able to save her. I was more talking to myself rather than to the immortal healer. Telling myself that I couldn't turn away again, not after coming this close. The immortal healer, after staring into my eyes for a bit, looked away and spoke. If I see that something bad might happen, I'm barging in. And finally, the immortal healer gave me his approval. I was finally able to convince him with half-dot-truths and half-dot-lies. After that, the sword master asked me. How should I position myself for you to feel most comfortable? You can just sit comfortably. Gu Ryungwa helped the sword master sit down, and then I carefully went behind the sword master and sat behind her back. I tried to clear my mind when I saw the sword master's curved and skinny back. Because as I reached my hand out, I couldn't help but be afraid and anxious. As I thought, it would be hard to overcome my emotions in such a short time. But I still had to do it. If I don't, it'll crumble. It was a thought I'd had even in my past life, a thought I had avoided countless times. The hand that reached out finally touched the sword master's back. I'd been worried that I would need a special way with which I would absorb the demonic chi flowing inside her, but that worry quickly vanished, because I felt the demonic chi that was inside her start to flow into me the moment my hands touched her back. At the same time, my destructive flame arts roared to life inside me. Holy! Because such an unexpected amount of demonic chi was rapidly surging into me, I felt as if my body was being ripped apart. I felt like screaming out, but I clenched my teeth to hold it in. 
I'd realized it as soon as I started to absorb her demonic chi. If I made so much as a tiny mistake, I was fucked. It'll overflow if I let my guard down for even the slightest moment. The demonic chi repeatedly flowed around my body alongside my destructive flame arcs. It felt as if there was a storm inside my body. It made no sense to purify chi as violent as demonic chi in the first place. But my destructive flame arcs along with the power of Mount Hua I'd gotten from the treasure was making it possible. The chi of Mount Hua was making the wild demonic chi flowing around my body move smoothly. But even so, it was extremely painful process. Shit. It was even worse than the pain I felt back when the heavenly demon had turned me into a demonic human by giving me demonic chi in the past. It was very likely that the sword master was also experiencing similar pain, but she didn't let out a single groan. Even with her body being so weak. She probably had a weaker body than the average person at this point. But even with such a weak body, she was enduring such pain. Knowing that gave me the strength to endure my own pain. Asterisk 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 how much have I absorbed? It felt like an eternity had gone by, but it realistically hadn't been that long. I felt the demonic chi I was absorbing slowly being purified inside my body, but the purification process was gradually falling behind the rate at which the demonic chi entered my body. It was too much. It was way too much. She'd been holding on with this amount of chi. It really made me realize how powerful the sword master was as a martial artist and how pure her chi was. I felt like I was going to lose consciousness because of the chi surging into my body like ocean waves. But I have to endure it. I couldn't give up now. Not only was the sword master's life at stake, but there was also the fact that I wasn't confident enough to deal with the demonic chi that would overflow and explode. Why do I always come across situations where chi had to enter my body that it wasn't easy to so much as come across such a thing even if one tried? But wherever I went, I was always met with such a situation and the impact of it was extremely hard to endure. I guess this is just my luck, for fuck's sake. When I was about to reach my limit due to the endless demonic chi flowing into my body, ugh. I heard a sound from somewhere. Ha. Huh. Oof. Oof. Ugh. This voice, and suddenly, the pain I'd been going through disappeared. I've definitely heard this voice before. The unknown voice I'd heard back when I was fighting Yahyaljik. The voice I had forgotten about suddenly resurfaced in my head clearly, I'm full, but, but. The unknown voice that sounded decrepit and robotic sounded livelier the more the time passed by. I had a bad feeling about that change. What are you? But this time, it's, delicious. The voice didn't respond to my question, this, is very delicious. Alongside a voice that sounded like it was giggling. Demonic chi suddenly started surging into my body all at once. The demonic chi that was explosively entering my body instantly filled up my body and even started to reach my abdomen area. The pain wasn't even the problem anymore. I'm going to die. This was a problem of death. I started to bleed from my mouth. I retained consciousness even though I felt like I would black out at any moment, and the arms that I wanted to retrieve, I found were stuck on the sword master's back. Both my consciousness and body were out of my control. What, is, this shit? Kush. The demonic chi that was flowing into my body as if it was destroying my body, dot ah. Stopped after that one word, that was tasty. Following the voice that sounded satisfied. My body became weak, and I lost consciousness. Asterisk 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 when I opened my eyes, it was already morning. When I lifted my body up in shock, I saw that I was still inside the hut where the sword master was being treated. Thankfully, I hadn't become disabled due to chi overflowing and exploding. Was it perhaps a dream? I thought that it was possible that it had been a dream, but when I checked my body, I immediately realized that. There is a fuck dot ton. I felt the demonic chi flowing around inside my body. 
It felt like there was more demonic chi than my own chi. When I looked around, I noticed that the immortal healer and Zhuge Hyuk weren't here, and Gu Ryungwa was wriggling around underneath a blanket. Is it morning? Had I been out for two whole days again? It didn't feel that way. I couldn't find the sword master in the immortal healer, so I started feeling nervous. Wondering if something bad may have happened. I first went out of the hut. Swish. Swish swoosh. When I went out the door, I saw someone swinging a sword underneath the sunlight. And as soon as I saw that, I let out a sigh of relief. There was a scent of plum flowers following even the light swings of the sword. The sword movement seemed weak, but I knew it wasn't weak because of the sword trails that flowed through the air after every swing. Impressive. From the outside, the movement seemed weak, but I felt chills run down my spine as I continued to watch the movements. Then, the sword art stopped. I couldn't see it clearly due to the sunlight, but it seemed like the person was looking at me. You woke up. Yes. The white hair that used to make her look old was gone, and her hair that was being blown by the wind was now a lustrous black. It feels different now, seeing you like this. I felt like I should have been the one saying that. It was almost absurd how different she looked now when compared to the appearance she'd had before I passed out. I couldn't clearly see her face because of the sunlight, but I already knew. Did she change her bones or something? Though I don't think that's the case. I guessed that her bones had somehow gone back to how they had originally been. But, had all that happened really just because I absorbed some demonic chi, creak? Someone opened the door and came outside. Master. It was Gu Ryungwa, as I'd expected. As Gu Ryungwa caught sight of her master, I saw her eyes grow shaky. And immediately after, she burst into tears. The sword master laughed after seeing her. If you keep crying like that, your pretty face will rot away. Gu Ryungwa, after hearing her, ran towards the sword master and hugged her. I looked away when I saw her crying inside the sword master's arms. Ugh, I hate awkward moments like this. I awkwardly scratched my head. I wasn't used to things like this. I felt that I still needed a thorough explanation from her, but at the moment, it seemed like I had at least successfully achieved my goal. Though I would probably have to carefully observe my body later, and then there was the fact that I would also have to explain all that had happened to the celestial plum blossom. However, I feel like I'm forgetting something important. I felt uncomfortable because it felt like I had forgotten about something. Asterisk 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 when I got back to the lodge, I realized what it was that I had forgotten about. I saw YC old dot ah and Namgung by dot ah glaring at me with their arms crossed. Namgung by dot ah spoke the moment she saw me. You told me to come back before the meal, and yet you stayed out the entire night. Yeah. Chapter 91 Treatment, 4, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Treatment, 4, after morning came the immortal healer returned with some medicine. It seemed like he'd gotten them from Mount Hua. How does he do it with such a frail body? It was hard enough for normal people to climb up and down the mountain, but the immortal healer was doing it like it was nothing with his body. He must be getting them delivered to him, right? I felt that it'd be too much for his body if that wasn't the case. All of the turbid energy is gone. Those were the words that the immortal healer said whilst he thoroughly inspected the sword master's body. Thankfully, all of the demonic chi that had been inside her had been extracted successfully. I was told that when I'd fainted during the process, the sword master had fainted soon after. And when the immortal healer checked on us after, he saw that the turbid energy that had been inside the sword master was gone. And told me that my body also seemed like it had no problems. What I learned from this was that. As I thought, the immortal healer can't feel the demonic chi inside my body. That seemed the most likely scenario because he had been able to notice the turbid energy inside the sword master, but didn't say anything about the demonic chi that was inside my body. But how? Saying that I didn't have it would be wrong because even as I thought to myself, 
I could feel the demonic chi wriggling inside my body. Thankfully, it seems like it's in the process of purification. The demonic chi inside my body was slowly getting eaten up and purified by my destructive flame arcs. There was just so much that I could barely notice the process. I don't really feel the demonic chi going wild, or feel any pain at all. That was what I was most relieved about. I'd been worried about what to do if the demonic chi I absorbed went wild. But at the moment, that hadn't happened. The immortal healer, after noticing that my body was fine, told me to go back and rest. He said that I looked fine, but told me to call him if a problem occurred. I was surprised at the unexpectedly kind act from the immortal healer. He really got rid of the turbid energy, I need to see how he did it. Opening up his body would be the easiest way to find out, but I can't do that right now. What should I? I felt like I shouldn't be listening to this, so I quickly left. When I was about to leave, the sword master called out to me, telling me that she'd visit me later, and then thanked me. I responded, telling her that there was no need for her to thank me, and then returned to the lodge. And now at present, you told me to come back before the meal, and yet you stayed out the enter night. I think I'm fucked. Asterisk 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 two pairs of cold, angry eyes were looking at me. The chills I felt as a result of the glares made me feel as if I was standing in snow. I'm fucked. Why see old Dada tossed her head to the side after looking at me for a while, but Nangung by Dada continued to glare at me without even blinking. She already had a cold expression by default so her icy glare made me feel like there was snow falling around her. Uh, it's, how did I end up in this situation? I paused for a moment after that thought popped up, and then actually thought the situation through. Why am I getting in trouble right now? It felt like the situation was flowing weirdly. Because of that, I almost blurted out an excuse. I'm the owner of this place, so why am I in trouble for staying out overnight? Of course, part of it was really my fault for not coming back after telling her to come back before the meal. But I had things that I'd needed to take care of. What was even more absurd was, why can't I just say it since I know that? My instinct was telling me, that I should just stay silent. It was telling me that I would only get in more trouble if I spoke. And so I kept my mouth shut and continued to look at Namgung by Dot Ah. After we'd stared at each other for a while, Namgung by Dot Ah moved. Just as it seemed that she was leaving to continue her training, she spoke to me. At least, tell me next time, after saying those words, she left to train. That evening, I experienced the quietest meal I had ever had since my regression. Namgung by Dot Ah didn't speak much in the first place but even why seal Dada didn't say a word. I honestly felt like I was going to get sick. Then the next day came. Why seal Dada was someone whose mood quickly changed after a day even if she had been sulking the previous day, so she came to me with a bright smile, and we talked. I didn't know if Namgung by Dada was still angry at me for yesterday, but in my eyes, it seemed like she wasn't thinking much about it. Am I saved? I felt like I could finally catch my breath. When I checked my body, I saw that there was still demonic chi flowing inside, but as the purification process was still underway, it was much calmer. I even revolved the chi around me, checking just in case for if the demonic chi inside me had become noticeable, but thankfully, the chi I released wasn't demonic in nature. It felt like the demonic chi was being suppressed by something. Like something was preventing it from doing anything. Is this related to the voice I heard? The voice I'd heard while absorbing the demonic chi that had been inside the sword master. The suspicious, ominous voice aroused my concern. Perhaps, the reason why Elder Shin disappeared was, I couldn't erase that thought. Where had the noisy voice of the Elder suddenly gone off to otherwise? Could whatever it was that was devouring the chi even reach Elder Shin? It wasn't that I missed Elder Shin just because a few days has passed, I had definitely become attached to him, but before that I had to know. How far can this thing reach? If something was inside my body, I had to find out what that thing was. I also had to find out what that thing wanted. 
is this thing the monster Elder Shin was suppressing? I wasn't too certain of that, but I had no answers other than that. Is this also because of my demonic art? The demonic art that had somehow followed me even into my resurrection. I had been able to do many things with this sickening power in my past life, but I didn't want to repeat those same things again. How tiring. For a second, I thought I heard an old man's voice, saying that I was still complaining even after everything had ended on a good note. Did Elder Shin really disappear? It felt wrong to say that because, for some reason, it felt like he hadn't completely disappeared. But I didn't know why. While I was meditating, I felt a presence outside. Young master, it's Homwa. After hearing the voice, I stopped revolving my chi. My focus was already broken, so there was no point in continuing. What's up? Slide. Homwa carefully opened the door after my response. A guest came looking for you. A guest. Who? Young Peng immediately came to mind. The only guests I usually had were Young Peng and the Celestial Plum Blossom. So it felt right to assume that it was Young Peng, particularly as the Celestial Plum Blossom was most likely busy with resolving everything that had happened up until now. But, an unexpected name came out of Homwa's mouth. Young lady came to look for you. Ha! Huh. Gu Ryungwa had come to visit. And not just by herself, but with another person. Asterisk 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 with Hongwa's guidance, they came into the room. Gu Ryungwa, who seemed visibly uncomfortable, stepped in alongside another woman. I'm sorry for visiting you so randomly. It's, no problem. I was so shocked that I even stuttered my words. The person that accompanied Gu Ryungwa, was none other than the sword master. But the problem was that it took me a while to realize that the person before me was indeed the sword master. She had changed that much. I'd thought that she would just look a little younger, but it wasn't just, a little younger. The white hair she'd had was completely gone replaced by a deep black, and the wrinkles that had made her look older than the celestial plum blossom had completely disappeared. That she looked like she was in her thirties, at most forty. Is it normal to change that much just because I absorbed demonic chi from her? The chi she had been using to fight against the demonic chi had probably been restored to its original locations after I extracted the demonic chi. I knew already how pure and clear the sword master's chi was since I'd seen it yesterday, but I hadn't known that it was this powerful. I'm glad that you look to be in a healthier shape. You seem very surprised. Yes, I really was surprised. Because the elderly woman you used to look like disappeared and you've come back looking like an elegant lady. She definitely looked younger than yesterday. The sword master put on a light smile after noticing my thoughts. I was also surprised. I didn't even think that I could go back to my normal appearance, but it only took a few days to change this much, I guess she didn't change her bones after all. Since she'd said that this was her normal appearance, then that was probably the case. To be fair, it's probably impossible for her to just change her bones like that in one day in the first place. The immortal healer went on about how it was impossible for me to change this much in just a day, so I calmed him down when he said he was going to go find you. Oh, that I am very thankful for, I remembered the expression on the face of the immortal healer when he'd said that he wanted to look into my body. I was sure that I'd seen a bit of lunacy in that face. I should avoid him for a few days, I was a bit scared. I came here today because I still haven't thanked you yet. You really don't have to, how can I not, when I'm indebted to you for saving my life? After saying those words, the sword master respectfully lowered her head to me. I tried to stop her in shock, but the sword master spoke faster than I could act. Thank you. You saved this lacking woman's life, sword master. It's only thanks to you that I can see the light of next year that I shouldn't have been able to see, and that I didn't have to feel guilty about leaving my disciple behind, so how can I not thank you? I just did what I felt was right to do. I know better than anyone that that is the hardest thing to do. Is that really the case? The sword master had said that with complete honesty, but it was something that I couldn't understand. 
I hadn't done what I did because of whatever reason she thinks I did it for. I'd only did it to atone for all my sins. The sword master then spoke to me. If you have something you want, do tell me. This life was saved only thanks to you, so I'm willing to give it up for you whenever you want. Master. Gu Ryungwa called her master with shock, but the sword master's eyes seemed serious. I smiled at her. How can you offer your life when you've just been saved? She was offering her life to me even though it had only been a few days since she was cured. This told me that the gratitude she felt towards me was just that genuine, plus, I glanced at Gu Ryungwa. And as our eyes met, Gu Ryungwa let out a fake cough and quickly looked away. I think I'm the one that's indebted to you instead. It was a pointless thought. I shook my head quickly to put it aside. Instead of your life, I think I may have a request for you. Tell me what it is, I'll do anything. Um, can you say that you'll do anything when you don't even know what I want to ask? What if I told her to betray Mount Hua, or to kill someone, what would she do then? The sword master then spoke while lightly laughing after noticing my thoughts. Whatever request you'll make, it doesn't seem like it'll be something that will harm anyone. What did she see in me that made her think that? I avoided looking at her after feeling uncomfortable by her overflowing faith in me. I was the one that burnt down Mount Hua. I told myself that I wouldn't run away from it anymore, however, and it only made it scarier. Until everyone in Mount Hua had died, and everything was burnt into ashes, I had watched it till the end, so I clearly remembered everything that happened. I'll visit you later since it's not something I need to ask now. The sword master smiled at my words. Oh, and I have one more thing I want to ask you. Me. Yes. I've been curious for a long time. But I never got to ask. The sword master, after saying that, told Gu Ryungwa to go outside. Gu Ryungwa seemed like she wanted to stay, but the sword master strictly ordered her. Go outside for a bit. Yes, then Gu Ryungwa left the room, sulking, and as Gu Ryungwa departed the room, the smile on the sword master's face disappeared, giving way for a serious expression. What is she going to ask me? I told her that she could ask me, and the sword master paused for a second to release a deep sigh, after that, she spoke. Do you know about Chanhi's disappearance? Dot. The thing that the sword master was curious about. It was about my mother. Chapter 92 Preparation, 1, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Preparation, 1, it was an inexplicably cold winter. I could feel the chill of the winter seep through my knees as I kneeled on the ground. I was unable to see the faces of the people standing around me due to the shadow acting as a veil, covering their faces, but I knew instinctively what kind of expressions they were making right now. Did she feel pity? Sympathy? No. They definitely felt no emotion, not even an iota of it. In the middle of all these hateful eyes, was me, looking listlessly at the visage of a woman. She was touching my cheek with her trembling hands as tears streamed down incessantly from her eyes. And I, was unable to utter even a single word. The only thing I was capable of, just staring at the pitiful woman with hollow eyes. I'm sorry. I was unable to understand the meaning behind the apology of the crying woman's mouth. For what? What is she so sorry for, mom is sorry. She kept repeating the same string of words, a sad tune accompanying her trembling voice. I was still unable to utter a word. Not even a whisper. I wondered in my mind, just what kind of expression was my father making while standing beside me. Right now, I was unable to look up and find out. Because, if I did, I would probably crumble into pieces inside. No, perhaps, I had already reached that point. Let go now. Father's cold voice reverberated in my ears. My mother's hand, caressing my cheek, slowly but surely went down with the command, I'm sorry. Those same goddamned words, they feel like they were being hammered into my chest. Just whose fault was this? It was the time of snowfall. 
I started shivering due to the icy cold. The outer garment that mother covered my body with, had been blown away by the cruel wind, still, no one cared. This was the first time I had experienced such a chill in my life. Not due to of the season, morphed in frigidity and cold, but rather the sensations I was feeling, which made me feel like I was freezing up from inside out. I had come to learn that this was much scarier than any amount of coldness that the seasons can inflict me with. Preparations.it is all ready, sir. Mother lowered her head after registering the few words that had been exchanged. I, who had been watching the spectacle the whole time, finally asked my father, why? I couldn't dare to look up to his eyes. However, I was still sure that father was looking at me when I spoke, why are you showing me something like this? I was just unable to understand. Why did I have to watch this? Why do I have to watch my mother crying? I didn't know. Nor did I want to know or understand for that matter, what is it that you want from me, what I want from you? Father's icy cold voice descended upon me. Just what was the identity of the emotion that lay within his voice? Was it anger? His voice was too calm and monotone for it to be anger. Was it sadness then? His voice was too dry and steady for it to be called sadness, nothing. I couldn't help but stare at father's eyes when I heard his emotionless response that I have nothing I want from you. Stay alive, that's all I need from you. With those lines delivered in a cold and apathetic tone, and a frigid chill in his eyes, I was forced to endure the horrifying sensations of the suffocation I felt in my heart. The eyes that had been trained on me shifted locations, open. With that commanding word along with a small movement of his hands, a huge door appeared behind mother, ripping into the space beyond. The door that appeared with the rushing wind was tinged in a red aura, a sickening stench of unknown origins mixed into the gale, what is. When I started to feel puzzled and afraid of its presence, mother carefully held my hand. I looked at mother with a deep tremble in my eyes, but I was unable to see her face as her head had been lowered. Take care of Ryungwa, mom. I did not want to let her go. I wanted to ask where she was going, and why she had to leave us behind, however, it was already too late for me to ask any questions. Immediately, I reached my hands out towards my beloved mother, however, just as the door's aura grazed past mother's body, her body began disappearing from existence.n. No. Mom. I tried to do something, anything to get a hold of my mother, however, I was instantly pushed back by father, unable to go forwards. I immediately tried to rush back, trying to do anything in my powers to stop mother, but the door had already closed in that short time, and the place mother had been sitting on in her lone zone, was empty, without a single trace of anyone's presence. As if nothing was even there in the first place, why? Just why? How could you do this to us? I cried out emotionally, but father's eyes never looked at me for even once. I didn't want him to love me. I already knew that he wasn't the type of person who could feel things like love and affection, so I was fine with it. I didn't want anything from him. Because my young self was already satisfied with the things I already had, why? Why, why? Why? I charged at father using all my strength and started hitting him with everything I got, as though I was hitting on a wall. It didn't hurt him one bit, I knew but I felt like I was about to go insane if I at least didn't retaliate this much. When I ended up in a state where I couldn't use my arms anymore, as all Chi had already left those small confines, father spoke in that same frigid tone, are you satisfied? It really seemed that there was not a trace of emotions in his voice. Once I heard his words, instantly, I collapsed to the ground. Darkness filled up my vision. It was at that moment that my young self learned. That this feeling was known as despair. When I was wallowing in this sickening emotion, as tears flowed down my face in tandem with my heavy breaths, father passed by my collapsed self, as though it meant nothing to him, and spoke up, follow me, I have something to show you. Those were the words leaking out of his lips, but it was more akin to orders than anything else. As my body was already being forcefully dragged away. I was unable to think about anything any longer nor did I wish to think about anything. 
I wanted to live forever inside this darkness that now permeated my existence. However, as if to show me that what I had seen had not been enough already, when I was forcefully brought into the Gu clan's basement, I finally saw what kind of clan the Gu clan was. Why the clan was made and the reason of our existence. Father then informed me that this was our fate, fate of the members of our clan. I had to realize in that dark and colorless night of winter. That the rest of my life would be nothing but a surefire ride of hell on earth. Asterisk 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 I stayed quiet for a while after registering the sword master's question. I didn't expect this coming from her. I never expected that the sword master would question me as such. About my mother. It was understandable since she was indeed my mother's friend, however, that knowledge didn't pique my curiosity. Did she not hear from Gu Ryungwa? Or did she know something? I knew that Gu Ryungwa had seen everything that transpired on that fateful day. However, she had lost conscience after some time, so she hadn't been able to see it all. How come you are curious about that? I spoke, unaware of the sharpness that naturally exuded from my tone. I definitely had to calm myself down. The sword master maintained her calm expression even after hearing the tone of my voice. Where my mother went, it was something I've been curious about all my life. What was ironic about it was that, I was only able to realize the truth after meeting the heavenly demon. Mother passed away. Was that really what happened? I asked myself that question, a question whose answer I didn't wish to know. It was only right that Gu Ryungwa keeps the resentment and hatred she felt for the clan and me. Truth is a sin. I had to keep that goddamn truth inside of my mind. I don't think I can tell you any more about it as this is our clan's matters. I signaled that I was not willing to answer her question. This was honestly better than straight dot up telling her lies. The sword master, after hearing my words, stared into my eyes for a long, long time. I too didn't avoid her gaze and stared back. As our staring contest continued, suddenly, the sword master closed her eyes in resignation. Right. I'm sorry for asking something that's painful for you. It's fine. It's already in the past. Thank you for understanding. Oh. I'm curious about when you'll return to your clan. I believe we will start on our way after one or two days. Even with the tournament starting soon. Judging by the sword master's reaction, it seemed to me that she was unaware of Gu Ryungwa's refusal to return home. I was originally planning on leaving after the event, but I am thinking of going early as my little sister said that she won't return to the clan with us. Gu Ryungwa had been ordered to return to the clan at a certain time every year. That was the deal that my father had made with the sword master. So I had to bring her back with me no matter what, however, considering the fact that father had sent me here while offering a heavenly pill, I'm tasked to bring her back and I'm in a position where I won't get in trouble even if I throw a tantrum. The higher dot ups of the clan would probably have their eyes trained on me, and I would likely get in some trouble if I were to stubbornly force her to return with me, however, it wouldn't lead to any big problems. He'll just take care of it by himself if he feels the need for it, if that wasn't his intention, he would have taken care of this matter himself. He shouldn't have sent me to this place if that were to be the case. I didn't want to force a girl to come with me when she clearly had no desire to do that. I should be the only one to be forced to do something that I don't want to do. Getting a hold of the things I was forced to let go of in my past life, one thing at a time, was something that should be done by myself, after all. The sword master donned a befuddled expression on her face after hearing my words. I had spoken it with the express intention of not leaving any leeway for any problems, but did it still cause some troubles after all? Contrary to my growing worries, the sword master merely nodded her head in acknowledgement soon enough. Okay. I see. Then she stood up promptly. I apologize for taking up your time. You are leaving. Since I said everything I came here for, I should leave already. The eyes outside are also quite scary. The eyes outside. When the sword master went out of my room, I also followed her outside, intending to send her off. 
I'll be waiting excitedly for the request you'll make. You don't have to be excited about it. It is an important matter, but I still had to think about it. I believe that next time, I'll come with the immortal healer. You don't need to come to me. I'll visit you one last time before I leave. The sword master smiled kindly, a smile that had reached even her eyes, after hearing my words but didn't say anything in response. Ha! Huh. Was she signaling that she wasn't going to listen to me? I was starting to feel a bit scared now. Ha! Huh. When I went outside with the sword master, I saw Gu Ryungwa and Namgung by Dada standing outside. I thought that she had gone out to train already, but what was she doing here? Namgung by Dada repeatedly looked at me and the sword master with her characteristic emotionless expression on her face. I was about to go towards her, wondering why she had been acting like that, but the sword master went up to her first. So you are that child. Namgung by Dot A was slightly taken aback when she saw the sword master going up to her. She was about to lower her head as a show of respect, it was understandable since the sword master was a respected martial artist of the martial world, but the sword master grabbed Namgung by Dot A's hand with a soft touch. Ah. Thank you for saving my disciple. Thank you so much. Um. It's, it was refreshing and unique, seeing Namgung by Dot A so flustered and lost. I heard a lot about you from my disciple. That there was a pretty girl that took care of her and helped her a ton with her training in swordsmanship. Ah, Namgung by Dot A looked away, feeling embarrassed due to her words. You are beautiful just like my student stated. I never saw such a pretty child in my whole life. Namgung by Dada's head kept lowering further and further the more compliments she received from the sword master. The sword master then spoke while looking at the shy Namgung by Dada. I heard that you are Yangchen's fiance. Yangchen. I had to stop on my tracks for a split moment when I heard her speak that word so naturally. I didn't expect her to think that we were that close already. Namgung by Dada nodded her head ever so slightly in response. It seemed like she had no intention of denying that fact. Though I also half that gave up on that thought too. Both yours and Yangchen's heart are so kind, so you'll be a good match for each other. I really don't think that's true. I held myself in from speaking out as I didn't want to ruin the good atmosphere that was going on between them. However, I denied that notion immediately. The sword master left after telling Namgung by Dot A that she wanted her to see her one more time before she left with us so that she could repay her for teaching and then saving her disciple. I asked Namgung by Dot A after I checked that the sword master had left the premise. You didn't go to train. Yeah. She had taken off the bandages from her arms already, thankfully, it seemed that her broken hand had healed already, that too in a few days. HM, thankfully. Huh. What's wrong with you? Hmm, nah, you just look like you are in a good mood. Was that my mistake? It felt like Namgung by Dot A was smiling ever so slightly. She still had that usual emotionless look going on, but for some reason I myself was unaware of, she looked like she was in a good mood right now. Not really. Was the replit Namgung by Dot A gave to my question. However, in my view, she definitely seemed to be in a good mood. Is it because of the compliments she got from the sword master I had the belief that she didn't really care if someone called her pretty. But I guess she was still weak to compliments. Asterisk 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 the sword master mused while going to the hut. What happened back then? It was about the children's mother. Gu Yangchen seemed like he definitely knew something about the matter but he was intentionally hiding it from the world. So much so that it seemed like he would turn hostile if she were to press him further for answers. The sword master didn't want that to happen. Not only was she indebted to him, but she also felt guilty that she couldn't do anything for him in return. She wanted her disciple to be happy. That's what she prioritized as her master. When she neared the end of her life due to her disease, the only desire she had was for her disciple to find happiness in life. Ryungwa. 
Gu Ryungwa stopped in her tracks after hearing her master's call. She had a bright smile on her face because even the small act of holding her master's hand gave her endless happiness. I heard that you said you wouldn't return to the clan, is that right? Oh, a dark shadow covered her face as soon as she heard her master's words. Um, when I told him I didn't want to go, he said I didn't have to, but you should. A promise is a promise. But. Gu Ryungwa couldn't respond further. Her master had become healthy. It was a miracle like no other. They were able to walk together hand in hand, something that was impossible not long ago, and they were even able to train when they had some free time. It felt like a dream to Gu Ryungwa. That's why she was more hesitant to answer further. It was true that she didn't want to go back to the clan for even a second, however, there were also other reasons behind her decision. The main reason back then was, that her beloved master did not have much time left to live, however, there was another reason now for her reluctance. What if something happens to master again when I'm gone? She just felt uneasy leaving her master behind. When the sword master noticed her thoughts, she patted Gu Ryungwa's head softly and spoke. Do not worry. Master, since you feel so uneasy, let us go together this time. Ha! Huh. Gu Ryungwa became puzzled after hearing something that she was unable to make sense of. The sword master then looked at the puzzled disciple of hers and laughed out loud. She wasn't just lying to calm her down right now. She was being serious. Dead serious. It seems like I have something to do in the Gu clan too, so let's go together this time. Master, going together. A question mark immediately formed on top of Gu Ryungwa's head at that thought. Chapter 93 Preparation, 2, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Preparation, 2, it had already been 10 days since I came to Shangxi. I was residing in the Mount Hua sect for much longer than I had initially planned. It's primarily due to all those problems that popped out of nowhere. It'll be fall by the time I return to the clan. Owing to the extremely long distance between the two locations, it will really take me till fall to reach home. Time was really moving faster than I could give it credit for. It would soon be a full year since I had resurrected into the past. I didn't even feel like I had done much of anything, but time still passed by at such a rapid pace. I do feel that I have changed quite a bit, but didn't at the same time. My attainments in the destructive flame arts had already reached the fourth realm in a little less than a year. It was understandable since I was just climbing through the ranks that I had already attained in my past life, however, it still felt a bit too fast no matter how much I thought. The phenomenon was possible probably due to all the new energies that I had no idea I would be absorbing in this life. I was still far away from reaching the fifth realm of the flame arts, but at the same time, it didn't feel that far away either. It was a very ambiguous feeling. However, by the time I do reach the realm, I needed to set a goal for myself. It was funny that even though I hadn't reached the fifth realm, I was thinking of setting up my goals for the future. Blaze. Slam. Ugh. Young Pung flew out of the raucous flames that covered the surroundings and rolled on the ground in the end. Simultaneously, I suppressed the flames that had engulfed the area in their scathing heat. Phew, letting out a breath, I could immediately notice heat and steam leaking out of my mouth. Amazing. I told Young Pung. I was being truthful when I said those words. How long had it been since his first duel against Young Pung? Ten days at most, perhaps. However, Young Pung had changed drastically in that short amount of time. His plum blossoming sword, which felt light not long ago, now became faster and heavier than ever before. Moreover, his physical body, supporting his sword arts and acting as its foundation, had become much firmer than what it previously was. It was almost as if he had been training for years to achieve such growth. Geniuses, I swear, I was able to further realize just how talented young Pung was, so I couldn't help but smirk. The growth of his physique and aspects related to it were understandable since it relied more on effort rather than talent itself. 
However, there was something fundamentally different about Young Pung's sword strikes. It wasn't just sharper and faster, but it was also changed in a way that practically all of his attacks now targeted the enemy's weak points and gave them virtually no openings or chance for counterattacks. A change of this level would take a long time to integrate even with the presence of a mentor. However, Young Pung was learning this on his lonesome, and that too at a rapid rate. Of course, he probably does have a mentor. However, his mentor was unlikely to only focus on teaching Young Pung. Young Pung, sprawled about on the ground, coughed violently before speaking, conveying the absurdity he felt in my words. Who's calling me a genius now? It looked like Young Pung was saying, how could you be the one saying that to me right now, with the face he was making currently? Of course, from Young Pung's perspective, a kid that looked much younger than him was beating him up like it was nothing, so it was understandable that he felt that way. Comparing yourself to me is a bit much though. You should try regressing too then. Not that I can actually say this line, anyway, the rate of Young Pung's progression in his growth was gradually becoming faster and faster. It seems like he won't have a problem with overcoming his wall with his current mindset. Unlike the Young Pung from my past who had given up after being stuck in front of that seemingly unsurmountable wall, the current Young Pung gave me the feeling that he would be successful this time around. That was my estimation, but Young Pung, due to not being privy to the thoughts churning in my head, just showed me a bitter smile. I thought I worked rather hard, but I can't beat young Master Gu in the end, huh, I was thinking of speaking in response to that statement, however, in the end, I chose to keep my silence. I believe that keeping this silence was the best choice I could make for him at the moment. I got to work harder then. And, as expected, even without saying anything, he was able to fire himself up. Scary. Not only does he have monstrous talent, but he also has a passion that rivals that talent of his. He also had plenty of time as he was still in his youth. As long as nothing bad happened to him from now on, Young Pung would likely become a martial artist that could rival the heavenly venerables in power in the near future. At least that seemed to be the case in my eyes. So long as the demonic cult doesn't appear that is. Clench. I clenched my fist in anger but I immediately calmed down my nerves on the next second. Hiding my inner emotions, I asked Young Pung. Do you want to continue? Ah, uh, no. It will be troublesome for you if we spar anymore, so I shall go train by myself from now on. I had come here to duel with Young Pung according to his past request. It was me who had come to him, not the other way around. I did that because of his request, but I could still vividly recall his bright smile, seemingly touched that I came to him first. Does he like duels that much? After the duel ended, I asked him another question. Master Young Pung. Yes. I heard that the tournament starts in two days, is that right? Ah, uh, yes. Lord Celestial Plum Blossom informed us about that after returning from the Plum Blossom Cemetery. The Plum Blossom Cemetery. It was a place for the martyrs who had died for the Mount Hua sect. I didn't have much knowledge about it as I was not from the Mount Hua sect, but I still remember hearing that only the lords of the sect were allowed to enter that place. He finally returned Ha. Huh? I heard that the Celestial Plum Blossom went there not long after my talk with him after waking up, so it would mean that he was there for at least a few days. No wonder it was so noisy the people in the streets were talking vigorously about the tournament. That's why I asked Young Pung about it since I was able to hear about that from all the way up here. It seemed like it was time for me to soon return to my clan since the tournament was about to begin. What are you planning on doing now? If you don't have any plans, how about we train Togat, oh, I have something to do in the afternoon. That's disappointing. He really seemed disappointed by my answer. I also wanted to train since I had already increased the difficulty and my training hours, but I still needed to return to the lodge for now. After departing from Young Pung's place, I arrived back at the lodge. I looked around, searching for Ya, but it seemed like she still wasn't here which felt unnatural to me. What was she up to these days, 
so much so that I can't even see her around these parts anymore. I didn't know. For the past few days, I was only able to see Y C O D O during mealtimes. It was hard to get a hold of her sight any time else. When I asked Hongwa, she informed me that she was still performing all the work assigned to her quite diligently. Is she perhaps avoiding me then? Such a thought bothered me a bit. I even had the thoughts of bringing up this matter, of her avoiding me, if that really was to be the case. Should I try to appease her with some yagwa? I felt like that would be more effective than any complaints I could make to her. When I opened the door with these pointless thoughts in mind, I was greeted with the sight of Namgung by Dot Ah. Why is she sleeping here now? She was taking a nap, covered in a blanket, on the floor of my room. Moreover, the blanket was mine. I heard that Namgung by Dot Ah was taking naps inside my room recently. Wait, why isn't anyone stopping her even while knowing that? Should I just wake her up? It would not be problematic to wake her up since this was my room, after all, however, I still felt conflicted in doing something like that since she looked very comfortable while taking a nap like that. In the end, I just allowed her to sleep inside and exited my room. I had originally planned to change my clothes inside, but I just ordered a servant to bring me a new set of clothes while I sat on the floor outside. While I closed my eyes, basking in the sunshine, I uttered some words. Why did you come again? Oof. I spoke to Gu Ryungwa who had been busy stealthily watching me from behind a wall. I already knew that Gu Ryungwa was present in my lodging since I had heard about her arrival from Hongwa. Does your master have something to say to me? No. Then what? Gu Ryungwa's lips fidgeted silently while she kept looking into my eyes. I waited patiently as it looked like she had something to say to me. I didn't come to see you, brother. I just came here to see sis. N. No, I indeed came here to see you, brother. What is she saying? It looked like she was having an inner battle against herself right now. Why are you calling me brother all of a sudden? Then are you my sister? What she spoke was quite similar to what I had told her the last time. I didn't expect her to use it against me right now. Anyway, so you came to see me then. It was unexpected. Gu Ryungwa probably felt uncomfortable being around me, so I wondered the reason behind her coming here to see me. T. Thanks. I looked at Gu Ryungwa in utter shock after I heard what she said. The first thing she does after coming here is thank me. Furthermore, I felt more dumbfounded as it was none other than Gu Ryungwa who was thanking me right now. Did her master tell her to do that? For what, all of a sudden? You saved my master, so thank you. I already got the thanks from your master. Moreover, she even offered to help me with anything I asked of her, so that was already more than enough for me. I was already planning on getting the sword master's assistance on a matter that I needed to discuss with the celestial plum blossom. So Gu Ryungwa didn't need to, you did it for me, didn't you? I became completely silent after hearing Gu Ryungwa's words. Why? Why is she thinking that way? Your face says it all brother. So you came here to say that? She came all the way here just to thank me then. While I was pondering over those thoughts, Gu Ryungwa continued speaking. I'm scared of you brother. The sudden heart dot stabbing words almost made me lose my breath. I'm confused right now because it feels like you returned to your past self, but I'm scared that you would hit or curse at me again, so I'm just really feeling scared and confused and lost. Fear underlay in her tone as she spoke. This was definitely my fault. I shouldn't have done such things. I'm sorry. Those words were the only response I could give. If I tried to say something else, it would only come off as sordid excuses. Gu Ryungwa didn't speak when I apologized to her. Nor did she accept my apology or get angry for uttering those words. I also chose to remain silent, just keeping my gaze on her. Hesitating for some time, Gu Ryungwa spoke again. Can we be like before? No, was my immediate and blunt response to her question. 
I may have regressed, but it was still too late for us. It would be difficult for us to return to our past relationship due to the elements I couldn't revert about myself. Which was exactly why I needed to be strict and blunt in my tone while conveying my response to her. It would be tough to go back to those times. Since we already lost a dear individual to us both, the key person that would let us return to those times. Gu Ryungwa also nodded, more or less expecting my response. She didn't say anything further. After a period of gloomy silence, Gu Ryungwa brought up a different subject. I decided to go back to the clan. What? This suddenly. I thought you said you didn't want to go. Yeah, I don't want to go back to that nasty place. But Master said that she'll go with me. What is she saying now? The Sword Master is actually going with her. The Sword Master is going to come along with you. She told me that she has some business with our family. I mean. Why is she deciding to go with you when she just started to recover? This is the first time I've heard such a thing. The Sword Master really has some business with the Gu clan. She said that she'll inform you about her decision and the pertaining details the next time she sees you, but I'm just telling you now since I'm here already. After saying those words, Gu Ryungwa turned around. As she reached the entrance of my lodge, Gu Ryungwa spoke up again. Once again, thank you for saving my master, brother. There were no traces of resentment in those words. However, it was highly likely that she hadn't forgiven me either. Which was good since she should never forgive someone like me. Dad, killed mom. I was reminded of the Gu Ryungwa who had been bawling her eyes out while hiding her face in between her knees. I'm scared. Mom. I couldn't do anything while looking at my little sister as she cried and wailed. Father didn't kill mom. If mother really died. Then I would be the one who killed her. Be quiet. Brought hair. Don't say a word, just live like you don't even exist. I didn't know how to protect anyone at those times. Not that I would have found a way to protect someone even if I had returned to that moment. I would have just stayed silent. If my little sister was looking for someone to hate, then it should be me and me alone. I felt that to be the most appropriate outcome. I had also taken half a step into insanity at that time, so it was understandable that I couldn't come up with a better way to deal with that situation. But what about now? Can a seed bloom into a flower in soil that had already dried up? Wouldn't it just rot and become a part of the sickening soil? That was the analogy I would use to describe the relationship between me and Gu Ryungwa. Just like how it was between father and me, I felt the same be the case for me and my little sister. Can we be like before? Gu Ryungwa's words still echoed in my head. Why is it so hard, everything I come across? Tap. While I was trapped in my thoughts while sitting on the floor, I felt something being placed on top of my shoulder. When I looked at the thing, wondering what it was, I was surprised to see that it was Namgung by Dada, putting her chin on my shoulder with a sleepy look on her face. What are you doing? When did she wake up? She was sleeping so comfortably earlier. At least open your eyes. Have you gone to sleep already? Surprisingly, I thought that Namgung by Dada had woken up already, but it seemed like she had fallen asleep again with her chin on my shoulder. What is this? That I couldn't help but chuckle at this strange situation. It felt like the dark conflicted thoughts that were churning inside me until now went away just because of this small gesture of hers. I wondered if Namgung by Dot Ah did this on purpose, knowing that it would work, but that seemed highly unlikely. I carefully brushed Namgung by Dot Ah's hair with my hands. I should go touring the streets with her and YC old Dot Ah. I wasn't thinking of going down because I had something to do there. I didn't really have any business down there, however, I just felt like going there with them. I wondered in my mind why I felt that way, but, I just did. Just, I just want to. Chapter 94 Preparation, 3, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Preparation, 3, I returned to the lodge after having finished my afternoon training. 
Originally, I had planned to return to the clan around this time. But things got a bit twisted. I had to delay my return plan since Gu Ryungwa told me that she would be returning to the clan with me as well. Especially since the sword master also spoke of her desire to go to the Gu clan with us. So she's going with her. Since the sword master is going to the Gu clan, I, therefore, assumed that she will be going with Gu Ryungwa. Well, I can just hear it directly from her since she told me that she would be visiting me later. I also heard that the immortal healer was coming as well. So it seemed like I had to start wrapping up things here. I should first go and visit the celestial plum blossom. Even if I didn't go to him right now, it was very likely for him to eventually come to me. However, I believe that it would be more respectful of me, as a younger person, to visit the elderly first. I also had to make a request to him anyways. For that to happen, I have to see the sword master first then, I was planning to get help from the plum blossom sword herself during my visit to the celestial plum blossom to make a request. So before the visit, I had to inform the sword master of some things beforehand. After organizing my thoughts, I arrived at my room and immediately saw why Seol.a coming towards me, as she had seen me coming while doing the laundry. Young master. What's up? I barely got to see you in the past few days. I only saw her during mealtimes recently, so it felt kind of new to see her right now. Does she have a lot of work to do? She looks pretty tired. I noticed the slight signs of exhaustion on Yseol.a's face. But I don't think Yseol.a would get tired of doing work since she had a ton of energy when compared to the other workers. Did something happen? Ha! Huh. You look really tired. I just asked her right away to be sure. Something serious must have happened if Yseol.a, out of everyone, became tired over something. Yseol.a just smiled, a wide grin that stretched all the way to her eyes, as she heard my question. I'm fine. Nothing happened. Then she stood up. It looked to me that she was trying to show that she was, in fact, healthy and in good shape. Seeing her do that, I just smirked and messed up her hair. Take this. I was now able to do things like this to her when in the past I would often wonder if I could even dare to touch her. Now that I look at myself, I have changed quite a bit too from my past self. After playing with her hair for a while, I spoke to Yseol.a again. You want to go down to the city today? Ha! Huh. Why Seol Dada responded with a stupefied expression after hearing my question. Is it really that shocking? I guess I didn't usually go to places with her unless I had some business to do. Why Seol Dada soon turned into saucers, a testament to the magnitude of shock she was feeling right now. W. When, now. You busy. If you have work left, no. I have none. I did it all, I don't have any left. R. Right, glad to hear that. She responded back with a distinct desperation in her voice when I was about to cancel the plan. Forcefully stopping my mouth from smiling like a fool after seeing why Seol.a acting like that, I spoke to her again. I'll be back quickly after showering a bit, so wake her up and bring her. K. Ha. Huh. Bring her. Yeah. Ha. Huh. Yseol.a looked at me as though she was not able to understand what I was saying right now. Then she realized that I was talking about Namgung by .a and started glaring at me quite intensely. It'd be rude to just leave her here, right? I tried to make up an excuse, but it obviously didn't work on her. Of course, Yseol.a only glared at me for a bit and didn't say anything afterwards due to how nice she was. It's just that she let out what seemed like a sigh and went on her way to wake up Namgung by .a. I felt somewhat sorry, but I didn't really have any other choice here. I can't believe I would come across such problems. I was quite surprised by that realization, considering the fact that it was difficult for me to think about someone else in the not-so-distant past. After I washed away the sweat I had accumulated from training, I changed into clean clothes and went out of my room. 
Immediately, I saw the scene of Namgung by Dot Ah hanging on top of Y C O L Dot Ah. Ugh. You are heavy sis. MMPH, what are you guys doing? Namgung by Dot Ah was hanging on top of Y C O L Dot Ah while looking like she was still half asleep, hovering in her dreams. And due to the physical difference between them, it looked like Y C O L Dot Ah was getting covered up by Namgung by Dot Ah right now. Namgung by Dot Ah has been sleeping more recently, so did something happen to her? Do you want to go back and sleep? Us two can just go by ourselves. No sooner had I said those words, Namgung by Dot Ah immediately stood up on her feet. She still looked a bit tired, but it looked like she was trying to show me that she can go with us without any problem. Soon, I could see that she was searching for something in her pocket and immediately after, she took something out. A mask. Surprisingly, it was a mask. Does she just always have that with her now since I told her to cover herself up? Well, some people still looked at her because she was attractive even with the mask on, but wearing it still reduced most of the attention she would normally receive. It seemed like she felt uncomfortable with that many people looking at her, especially when she wasn't used to crowded streets. I guess that mask is satisfactory for Namgung by Dot Ah. You are prepared. This, is comfortable. Young master. Should I call brother Muyan? Hmm, I thought that he was ready to depart with us by now since I already told the escorts that I would be going out. A rare moment for Muyan to not be prepared. Realistically speaking, I could opt to just leave him behind, but Muyan would definitely scold me later if I didn't go with him tagging along. I already got scolded once because of the injury I had received from that ominous incident before. They kept asking me why I keep going alone without any escorts. I had no other choice because of how urgent it was back then. That's how worried Muyin usually was, so did something happen to him. Surprisingly, Namgung by Dot Ah was the one to answer the questions I had. He went to attend a duel. Duel against a disciple of the Mount Hua sect. A disciple. Who? Since Nangung by Dot Ah could only know so many students of the Mount Hua sect, and I doubted that it would be Gu Ryungwa, there was only one person left who fit the bill. Are you talking about Master Young Peng? Yeah. Nguyen went to duel against Young Peng. What is this random occurrence? He always rejected challenges from Namgung by Dot Ah and others because of his job as an escort. He did it with me too. What? I had no choice but to ask that question after hearing Namgung by Dot Ah's words. Did he duel with Namgung by Dot Ah too? This is the first time I heard such a thing. I didn't know how Namgung by Dot Ah felt about my reaction, but she quietly leaked out some words afterward. Then lost. I didn't ask who lost. I felt like I could tell who lost the duel just by looking at her gloomy expression. If someone wants to give Muyin a challenge, even after absorbing all the energies I did in this life, Muyin was still at a higher martial rank than I was. I still remember the time when a bunch of swordsmen were asking Muyin to return to their group back when I was in the clan. Muyin is certainly not your average martial artist. His talent probably couldn't hold a candle against someone like Young Peng, but that certainly didn't mean that Nguyen lacked talent. It wasn't common at all for a man who was barely over the age of 20 to be at that level of martial attainment unless they were a young prodigy that came from a noble clan. A duel huh? I wonder if something triggered him. Nangung by Dada stared at me for some time when I said those words. I asked wondering why she directed that gaze at me. What's up? I can, understand him a little. She went back to her usual indifferent expression after mumbling those words. Hugging Namgung by Dot Ah's waist why Seol Dot Ah was also seemingly asking me when we were going to leave with her eyes. I doubt that Muyin heard about us going out since I informed the escorts so suddenly. So I guess I can just go without him then, right? Since there were other escorts around after all. While I was finishing my preparations to leave, Namgung by Dot Ah suddenly spoke to me. When we return, let's duel, I stopped on my tracks after hearing Namgung by Dot Ah's words. 
Oh, right. I totally forgot that I had promised to duel with her. It should be fine since I already dueled with Young Pung. Though it's a bit bothersome how I keep getting reminded of the past. But it wasn't like I could reject her forever, so I should just accept her invitation. After we return, let's do it if I'm free. A rare expression of shock bloomed on Namgung by Dada's face due to what I said to her. Moreover, that smile. I smirked after seeing her mouth slowly curving into a small smile and started to walk. Is this really something that should be enough to make her happy? It would be more or less nighttime by the time we arrive back at the lodge, but it should be fine to spare some time for her as long as I didn't have anything to do. I should be fine as I didn't have any problem with dueling Young Pung last time. Unless I use up a ton of chi, as I did against Yahyaljik, I thought that it'd be fine to duel with anyone. After we looked around the city streets and filled up our stomachs with various delicacies, we returned to the lodge. But we were unable to do the duel that Namgung by Dot Ah had been so excitedly waiting for. Some work came up for me. You finally came. When I returned to the lodge I could see the immortal healer seated inside my room, waiting for me. Asterisk 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 it felt like I've been having a lot of guests recently. Which of course included Young Pung, Gu Ryungwa, the sword master, and now even the immortal healer. I did hear that he would come to visit me, I remember the sword master telling me that some time ago. It's just that he came by himself when I heard that he would be coming with the sword master. What brings you here? I came to check your body. Why are you so surprised? I'm not sir. I was just a bit puzzled. I could feel Namgung by Dot Ah glaring at me with a sharp intensity, unlike anything she had done before, but there was nothing I could do about it. He came to check up on my body after all. I gazed at Namgung by Dot Ah, signaling to her that we would duel some other time, and disappeared with a slightly sulky expression on her face. Hmm. Maybe I came at the wrong time. The immortal healer leaked out a fake cough, noticing the little gestures we made to communicate. Not a problem sir. You came here after freeing your schedule. I appreciate you saying that, now come sit. The checkup didn't take too long. There was no problem with my body besides the fact that it was overwhelmed with demonic chi at the moment. Hmm. You indeed have a fascinating body. I wonder what happened for all these energies to calm down like this. The immortal healer may have told me that this was a checkup, but to me, it looked more like he was doing research on my body. I could just see it in those eyes of his. What do I do if he really tries to cut my belly open? He was just joking when he said to me previously. He had to be. I answered every question that he asked me with coherence and precision. The immortal healer seemed very interested in the Gu clan's ability to get rid of the turbid energy inside one's body, but I told him that it was very hard to explain it to him, as he wasn't a martial artist himself. That was the excuse I made up to tackle this situation. In reality, I had no way to explain it. Saying things like, I guess our clan just has that ability. But I don't know much, should be enough for now. Although it would be problematic if the immortal healer came to our clan to ask about the ability though. But I doubt that he would visit our clan just because of this. The immortal healer was a doctor that was requested to visit in numerous places all over the world. So it wouldn't be a no-dot-brainer for him to visit the Gu clan when they had not even invited him to come. I think. The immortal healer leaked out a sigh full of disappointment after not being able to find anything else about my abilities. Well. It seems like you are healthy. Why are you saying that in such a disappointed tone? Is it just me or does he just not seem satisfied that I'm healthy? You really think I'm disappointed? It must be my mistake then, right? The immortal healer didn't answer my question. He just quietly took out a wooden pass from his pocket. Take this. What is this? Can you not tell by just looking? It's a wooden pass. I can see that at least, but I was asking what this is used for. Since I'm just a wandering doctor, I don't have much to give you. 
the immortal healer was trying to give me something. I was already satisfied with just the free treatment he gave me, so why was he trying to give me more now? I don't have anything big to give to you, but you should be able to get good treatment from the beggar's sect when you bring this pass to them. How come you are giving me something like this? I could see that this was a valuable item even at first glance. Furthermore, if this had relations to the the beggar's sect then. I was suddenly reminded of the black wooden pass that Peng Wu Jin gave to me last time. I originally wanted to give this to someone I was looking for, but I couldn't find him which is why I'm giving it to you. Just take it as a payment for a commission. A payment for, a commission. Yes, I have something to ask of you, after all. I knew it, something like this was too big to just give to me for free. He had a different intention behind giving me this pass. He isn't going to ask me if he could really open up my stomach, right? If that was the case, I would have to run away immediately. I heard that the sword master is going too by the time you leave. Oh, I heard that as well, but I'm not certain yet. I was the leader of our crew, so if the sword master wanted to go with us, then she would need my approval to tag along. And I wasn't sure if I could allow her to leave the Mount Hua sect when she just recovered from her sickness. The problem though, was what the immortal healer told me afterwards. I'm also going to the Gu clan as I have some business there as well. Ha! Huh. I already told Doa, and it should be fine since there are no places in the world where I'm unwelcomed. The immortal healer informed me that he had already mentioned about his departure to the celestial plum blossom. It was as though he had assumed that I would definitely approve of his intentions of tagging along with us. Why? Hmm, I couldn't help but say that. It was just too absurd. Why is everyone trying to go to my house when there are other better towns around? Is our house covered in honey or something? I even had nonsensical thought like these at this point. Asterisk 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 asterisk, I understand what you want, but do you really think I could achieve something like that? I also saw something in that girl, but I didn't thoroughly check her as Doa told me not to. I can't heal everyone just because of my name being the immortal healer. After hearing the immortal healer's cold words, the sword emperor spoke after standing there in silence for a long time. Then, this is impossible even for you. The immortal healer never lied and it came to healing someone. The sword emperor, of course, knew of that fact. That was the reason why he was able to guess the answer just by reading the immortal healer's expression in silence. The immortal healer only heaved a sigh of relief in response as he knew that the sword emperor had noticed already. It's a very hard task for me to just rashly go through one's energy when that person isn't actually human, nor a martial artist. Not only do I need an immense amount of time, but the ingredients needed for that may require destroying the root of a clan. I can take, alliance leader. The immortal healer cut off the sword emperor's words. Before you bring that to me, please fulfill my request first. I believe that takes priority. Dot, until then, I won't give my answer. It was a short and strict response. It would all end if the Sword Emperor didn't want to go through with what was asked of him. However, he wasn't in a position where he could let go of such an opportunity. It was a thread of light that came down into a hole of never-ending darkness. The Sword Emperor determined himself once he was reminded of his granddaughter, smiling at him brightly and happily. He then swiftly wrote a letter. Carefully, he wrote down on the blank white surface, filling it all up with words. Murim was written on the front cover of the letter. This letter was for none other than the current leader of the Murim Alliance, the Harmonic Sword, Jang Chion. Chapter 95 Preparation, 4, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Preparation, 4, I lost, uttered Young Pung in a fleeting dejected tone after panting for some time. The ground surrounding Young Peng was dug up in numerous regions and everything was a veritable mess of the worst kind possible. Moreover, there was also a pile of broken wooden swords scattered about on one side of the area. He had already run out of qi and his body didn't even possess the slightest strength to even pick up the sword any longer. 
as they had not stopped their duel even though the sun went beyond the horizon even though they started dueling in the early hours of day. Good work. Young Peng looked deeply at the owner of the voice. So strong. That was the only thing that was running in his head right now. The martial arts skills of the man called Muyin, acting as an escort for Gu Yangchen, was simply amazing. For Young Peng, he welcomed Muyin who came to him first for a duel as the tournament would start soon. However, he didn't expect him to be that strong. Young Peng suddenly remembered about Nam Gung by Dot Ah. Immediately, he noticed that his cheek grew hotter at the mere thought of that name. As he was reminded of something shameful he had done in the not dot so dot distant past. She had been the real reason why he challenged Gu Yangchen to a duel and it was also thanks to her that he ended up achieving enlightenment in the process, however, Young Peng still couldn't help but remember the immature self of his past. It's similar, but also a lot different. Young Peng already knew that Namgung by Dot Ah was a direct descendant of one of the four noble clans, the Namgung clan, but he also noticed a keen trait about her, it was the fact that Namgung by Dot Ah did not hesitate, not even for a single instance, to train even though there was a crowd watching her training. Whether this was due to her personality or she was used to the crowd was something that he was unaware of. However, from her display it looked as though she was welcoming the crowd of onlookers to watch her, thus delivering a beautiful show of her swordsmanship for the crowd to enjoy and witness. The way she wielded her sword incorporated numerous slashes in succession that made it fast and unique. This generally happened to people who trained by themselves with no mentor to teach them a specific sword art. Taking it from a negative perspective, there were a lot of useless and cluttered moves inside Namgung by Dot Ah's sword art. However, even with that negative aspect being present, she had a flexible body and insane talent which complemented her unique and disproportional movements that made it a positive trait instead of a negative one. At least to Young Peng, that's how it seemed. However, if there was an undeniable fact, it was that he knew that he would lose if he were to fight with her. But this person, it was the exact opposite in Nguyen's case. He was a well-trained martial artist with a strong base. To put it simply, he was an exemplary swordsman. Young Peng was able to quickly see the reason behind his loss against the man. Nian's sword didn't depend on some unique movements or innate talent, it only had a strong and firm base that was unshakable. Young Peng lost because Nian's sword was simply faster and heavier than his own. Thinking till here, Young Peng leaked out a dejected sigh as there was no excuses he could give for his loss. There is no end to the world outside of the well, huh, Young Peng's pride had been thoroughly shattered when he saw Gu Yangchen's talent. Moreover, it was broken further when he found himself lacking even when compared to Namgung by Dot Ah. Again he felt those same feelings when confronted with Muyin. There is no way to boost my confidence. Young Peng felt like the title of Sword Dragon that was given to him was becoming heavier and heavier with time. Soon, Nguyen reached towards him, his hand outstretched. Thank you. I was able to learn a lot from the duel. Not at all, Master Nguyen. In fact, it should be me thanking you as you wasted your whole day dueling with me. Young Peng grabbed Nguyen's hand and stood up on his feet. His clothes were covered in dirt all over, however. He didn't care and just brushed it a few times with brief movements. Nguyen spoke to him again. It seems like I stayed out for a bit too long today. I shall take my leave now. Are you planning on going back some time later? Yes, I think I'll train a bit more and then return. He had no other choice but to train to calm his disoriented mind. At least that was the only way the man named Young Peng knew how to calm himself and his mind. Nguyen nodded in response. After finishing the duel, Nguyen trailed down the mountain road to return to the lodge. Trailing down the mountainous road, embracing the fresh breeze of wind in the process, Nguyen donned an expressionless face throughout. It was the first time he had spent the entire day dueling with someone, not focusing on his job as an escort. What was the point of all this in the end? Similar to Young Peng, Nguyen had conflicted thoughts of his own constantly swirling inside his mind. 
He had done the duel to search for something, an answer of sort, but the only thing Muyin received in return was a disgusting feeling of guilt. An escort that's good for nothing, Muyin's words had a lot of remorse mixed within them. How many times did Gu Yangchen get into danger while being under his protection? Furthermore, whether it was because of the feeling of safety he naturally felt due to being inside a noble sect like Mount Hua or not, but he let his guard down and that led to Gu Yangchen getting into a lethally dangerous situation where he had to fight against a martial artist having reached the peak realm. He idly wondered just what hell he was doing these days. He tried to think of an excuse for his behavior but found none. He had let his guard down. It was as simple as that. He had let his guard down while escorting someone. What a useless guy I am. Of course, Gu Yangchen did a good job too by avoiding his sights and Nguyen also knew that the young master was reaching a level of martial prowess where he had no need for any escorts following him any longer. However, that too was an excuse he was making up. Nguyen understood that he was the Gu Yangchen's sword and shield. The only time Gu Yangchen was permitted to get injured was when he died. It wasn't due to the passion he felt for the Gu clan, nor was it because of the loyalty he felt for Gu Yangchen. His feelings of dejection came from the fact that he was being irresponsible in his job, and that was a huge problem. The life of a martial artist came to an end once they lost themselves. Those were the words that came from the Almighty Sword Emperor himself. Gu Yangchen was becoming stronger and stronger as the days went on. When Mian had first seen him, he was just you average boy who hadn't even climbed to the second dot rate state as a martial artist. But the Gu Yangchen now. He had become a first dot rate martial artist and was soon making his way to the peak realm, and it would not take him much time to reach it. Such rapid progression was achieved in the span of less than a year. However, what about him? How many years had he spent just trying to reach the peak realm? Nguyen thought to himself that he shouldn't be feeling the desperation to improve at his age. He believed that time was on his side, and he would be eventually able to reach that realm if he kept up the consistency and efficiency of his training. So when will that happen? How powerless! Nguyen felt extremely powerless right now. What was the point of training if as person training themselves to protect someone was not even able to do that? Nguyen wondered what his sword was for. He didn't know. He felt like he got lost just as he finally found the correct path. He then wondered again just what he had learned from the duel with Young Peng. I learned what my possibility was. Unlike others, Nguyen was able to see what kind of potential the kids had. This applied to Young Peng as well. Nguyen saw that he was progressing and improving even during the span of the duel itself. Even though he had missed 5 out of 10 attacks from Nguyen at the start of the duels, he was able to catch all of the attacks during the end phases. Moreover, Young Peng's openings that had been quite visible at the beginning were slowly diminishing more and more from the midway point and at the end, he had no openings left for Nguyen to exploit. Young Peng seemed disappointed by the outcome of the duel, but Nguyen knew that he had to hide his shock when he saw Young Peng's progress and feats during the duration of the duel. Young Peng would eventually come to reach his level, and there was definitely the possibility of him passing his level quite soon too. He was certain that it won't take long for this phenomenon to transpire. Would I still be at the same spot even then? Guilt and self.reproach he could perfectly visualize the sturdy and broad wall that stood between him and the next level. The demon that haunts my mind. Can I also see this as one? He stopped in his tracks. The refreshing breeze led him in the direction of the lodge, telling him to go back quickly, however, Nguyen's feet didn't budge, as though stuck to the ground on this spot. Just like this, just for a little, let's rest. It felt like he was being turned inside out. Nguyen decided to rest here for some time and then return, to continue working like nothing happened. That's what Nguyen told himself while not budging from the spot. However, while he was standing still, he heard some distant sounds. Swish. Swoosh. Hmm, it wasn't the sound of the wind. Being a sword user himself, he was quite familiar with the sound he was hearing. 
the feet that had been stuck on the ground till now seemed to be able to move now. He began walking towards the sound that was resonating in his ears, in the distance, before he could even realize. Swish. Swoosh. When he moved his steps towards the sound, he was able to see that someone was swinging a sword at a clearing. Why? Nguyen was shocked since he knew the person he was seeing right now. Made why? It was none other than Y. C. Old. Ah. She was the direct maid of Gu Yangchen who also happened to have a pretty face, and she always got spoiled by all the other servants. And that very same Y. C. Old. Ah was now swinging a sword in the middle of a clearing in the mountainous terrain during dinner time with nary a soul around her. Why is she doing that? Swish swoosh swish. From her swings it was evident that she was making a lot of unnecessary movements, movements that should not be made while swinging a sword, probably because she hadn't been taught by anyone, however, there was still a strange sense of strength and power behind each of her swings and strikes. Is she trying to exercise? That was the only thing Nguyen could think of right now upon seeing the scene since Y. C. Old de Ah was just a servant. Swish. All of a sudden, Y. C. Old Da Ah stopped swinging of her sword and tilted her head, confusion evident in her eyes as she twisted her body and turned her head around. Is this not it? Ha! Huh. Nguyen wondered if she was just talking to herself right now. It was pretty understandable as she had a rather, eccentric personality. It's hard, but this seems right. However, Nguyen had no choice but to gasp after seeing the movement of the sword that Y. C. O. Da Ra did just now. From the top to the very bottom of the sword path, her sword strike was super clean and even in Nguyen's eyes, her movement while slashing the sword had been correct. It was far different from the poor movements that she had been executing up until now. What the? He had clear doubts about what transpired even though he had registered them with his very own eyes. Doing it this way feels prettier and more comfortable, so why should I do it differently? Nguyen frantically looked at the surroundings to see if there was anyone else around this place since she kept talking by herself like that, however, he was not able to feel the presence of anyone. I should just go to Grandpa after all, no, I'm not going to Grandpa, he was mean to me. Her face immediately morphed into a sullen look at that thought. Nguyen received further bouts of shock after witnessing more of Y. C. O. Dada's movements. They were all very basic movements, but each and every single one of them were flawless. She was simply doing ordinary slashes and strikes as she swung her sword with light movements, however, there was something that was definitely different about them. How can it be like this? Disregarding the shocked Nguyen, Y. C. O. Dada swiftly put her sword movements to an end. Fine. I won't do it. As though she had gotten scolded, Y. C. Old Dada went back to executing the initial poor movements that Nguyen had first seen her doing. Nguyen couldn't help but step forward toward her after seeing this eerie set of events. He couldn't just sit and watch anymore. Made why? Made why, oh. Brother Nguyen. Waving her hand so happily, she was indeed the Y. C. Old Dada whom Nguyen was so well acquainted with. What are you doing here? Y. C. Old Dada responded with a bright smile at Nguyen's question. I'm learning to wield a sword. From, who? Well, from, Y. C. Old Dada stopped her words all of a sudden and then rolled her eyes as if quite a bit surprised by that question. I was doing it by myself. Alone. She changed her words. No matter how many times he checked, Y. C. Old Dot Ah was indeed alone and by herself. So, it didn't seem like she had been lying just now. While Mian was lost in his thoughts, Y. C. Old Dot Ah asked him something. Is Brother Mian on his way back to the lodge? Young Master was looking for you earlier. Oh. He felt like he had just made another mistake. Hiding his emotions, he responded to Y. C. Old Dot Ah with a thin smile on his face. I couldn't focus on my job today as I was doing some training. I'll go and apologize to the young master. Ha! Huh. No, the young master said that it'd be fine since it's Muyin and didn't say anything else. She looked quite cute while trying to impersonate Gu Yangchen with her expressions. 
Nguyen reached his hand out to pat her head as she reminded him of an adorable little sister but he soon stopped before his hands could reach her. Why see old Dut Ah was nice to everyone, but it was evident that she had erected a line that she didn't let other people cross. Especially when it came to patting her head, she hated it when someone tried to do that. The only people that, Nguyen was aware of, were allowed by Y C O L D A ah to pat her head were Elder Y and Gu Yangchen, so he stopped before doing something unnecessary. While the situation was about to shift in an awkward direction, Y C O L D A ah asked Nguyen. So are you going back to the lodge now? He nodded his head in response. Yes, I took too long of a rest yesterday and I should go back now. He then glanced towards the small wooden sword Y Seol Dut Ah was holding onto and cautiously spoke out. Uh, Maid Y, yeah. What made you suddenly take up the sword and train in it? She immediately blinked her eyes at his question, thinking long and hard about how to respond. It didn't take too long for her to settle on an answer. The young master keeps coming back with more and more injuries. I think he's constantly getting bullied. From the small and faint scratches to the serious wound Gu Yangchen had received from that dangerous incident before, she felt that her heart was about to be ripped out of her chest when she saw him in that miserable condition. Even though he wasn't that hurt. Why C. Old Da Da simply hated that sensation. She hated how she felt incredible pain at that sight and hated it even more when she realized just how much pain Gu Yangchen must be feeling due to those injuries. L.O., so I want to protect him. Nguyen was at a loss for words after hearing the words she uttered as if they were nothing. All servants knew that Y. C. O. D. A. liked Gu Yangchen as it was very noticeable to everyone. Honestly, it was almost too noticeable at this point. However, doubt still remained in his mind. The movements she had shown earlier, they were impressive enough to shock even him as a martial artist of the sword path, but she's just a maid in the end. He had to clench his teeth at the sudden thought that flashed in his mind. He realized that he was already looking down on Y. C. O. D. A. without even noticing it himself. She just continued smiling, not knowing the things going on in Nguyen's head. The next moment, she spoke to him with a bright voice. I'm going to go down too. Young master must be waiting for me. She picked up the wooden sword and started making her way to the lodge. Nguyen shifted his gaze toward Y. C. O. Dada's back while she was walking away. How pathetic of you Nguyen. Thinking that others can't achieve something when you yourself can't achieve it either. He knew full well well that Y. C. O. Dada was being truthful when she said those words, but he still harbored negative thoughts about her. Wake up. I still have a long way to go. He couldn't afford to crumble down in a place like this. Nguyen woke himself up from his reverie with that thought. Phew. He let out a long and deep sigh, throwing away all the negative thoughts in his mind with that exhale. But at that moment, the playfully hopping away Y. C. O. D. A. stopped in her tracks, turned around, and came back to Nguyen with a light and dignified gait. Made Y. Nguyen had no choice but to step backwards. Her face which had a bright smile not long ago was no longer present and was replaced with a cold and apathetic expression. That's enough. Pardon. The voice he heard was much deeper than usual. He wondered what in hell was going on right now. Without caring about his reaction, she continued on with her words. It seems like you know what you have to do, so I don't have anything to say about that. Her small and milky white hands touched his chest. Nguyen tried to get away from her touch, but his body seemingly froze for reasons he himself was unaware of. Why C. O. Dada didn't even look at his face, she just kept staring on at his chest as she spoke to him with that eerily deep voice of hers. Don't be stuck in just one spot, sometimes you just have to break through it with brute force. Tap he had to take a step back after being pushed by those dainty hands of hers. Suddenly he felt a blunt impact pounding on his chest and spreading throughout the entirety of his body. Oof. Is it a surprise attack? That was Nguyen's initial thought. Why did she do that? He tried to use his chi instinctively, completely befuddled by the current situation, 
but the force spreading throughout his body went away as soon as abruptly as it came. Once he came back to his senses, Mian couldn't help but swiftly rub his chest. What are you suddenly? He tried to complain, but noticed that Y. C. O. D. A. had returned back to her normal self, smiling at him with a bright expression. She spoke to him, the bright smile never leaving her face. Was what she told me to say to you? Who? She didn't respond. She just ran towards the lodge and disappeared from his sight soon after. A state of confusion colored his face after going through this bizarre event. Is it just a joke? He didn't know that Y. C. O. D. A. was capable of putting on such an act. Letting out a sigh of relief at that thought, he began pondering over the last words that she had conveyed to him just now. What do you mean by breakthrough? He believed that she was just joking with him, but still, there was a lingering feeling in his mind that he would be able to use those words for his benefit. He stopped his steps, wondering if he had just received enlightenment by those words, but then shake his heads to chase those thoughts away. If it's that easy to be enlightened. I wouldn't have to worry about it in the first place. However, even after saying so, he felt that all the complex thoughts that were jumbling inside his mind were washed away with Y. C. O. D. A. S. words. Being satisfied at that realization, he followed behind her and headed to the lodge. Asterisk 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 asterisk, what is this? Sitting on the floor, I saw Y. C. O. D. A. returning to the lodge followed by Muyin who came shortly after. When I had asked Honghua about her whereabouts, she replied that she had gone out for a walk. I couldn't help but complain, asking why she had let Y. C. O. D. A. out this late at night, after hearing her reply. I was harboring the thoughts of going outside and bring her back myself, but she returned before I could. However. Did something happen? Nguyen, who had returned shortly after her, seemed a bit off. Putting aside the fact that he looked like he had lots of thoughts going through his mind. Am I just mistaken? He felt a bit strange. Am I just feeling that way because I'm tired? He then came towards me after noticing my presence and my gaze that was directed towards him. I'm sorry. Ha. Huh. For what? I took a day off without even telling you. This will never happen again. Oh, is it just because of that? You should rest too sometimes, and you probably trained anyways even though you took a day off, right? I guess I'm correct since you aren't responding. I felt like I was beginning to understand Nguyen's train of thoughts and feelings by now, however, I had no way of helping him. It looks a bit different from Young Peng. If the wall that was stopping Young Peng's progress was his arrogance, then the solution to it was to shatter that arrogance of his, as I did back then. However, the wall that Nguyen was facing was something that he needed to overcome by himself. If you still feel the need to, rest more. No. Okay. After informing me that he would start working properly from tomorrow onwards, Nguyen left. I assumed that he was going for a night watch right now. I felt a bit concerned after seeing the exhaustion on his face. Is it bad enough to be dangerous? I guess I'll have to try that later when I find the time. I was not able to break the wall that stood before him and his progress, but I still hoped that I could help him in some way or form even if by the slightest margin. I wouldn't usually care about these things, but since it was Muyin, I felt it was right to help him out slightly. It would be a waste for that talent of his to not even bloom, right? So thinking of the future ahead, it might be a good thing to help him out right now. While I was putting an end to my thoughts, I saw Y. C. O. D. A. approaching me after washing herself. Young master. You. I was about to scold her for going outside all alone this late at night, but I just gulped those words back down in the end. I worked hard tonight as well. Right, good job. Responding to her with those words, I pulled out something from my pocket and handed it over to her. Ha. Huh. Why see old Dada's eyes became as round as saucers after witnessing the object that was in my hand. Feeling embarrassed for some reason, I spoke to her while avoiding eye contact. It's nothing much, but I'm giving it to you since you're working so hard. 
It was a hair accessory that shined with sparkling white light. I had bought this accessory when I had gone down to the market of Huayin with Namgung by Dot Ah and Y Seol Dot Ah. I had bought one for Namgung by Dot Ah as well, but I didn't get the chance to give it to her yet. Why? You are giving this to me. You don't want it. Then I'll just give it to someone else, no. She quickly took away the hair accessory from my hands. And then started to giggle like a fool as she hugged the first gift I gave her in this life. I felt a hint of surprise coloring my face as her reaction had been far better than my expectation. Is this really something that was enough to make her that happy? It's just some cheap hair accessory though. This made me want to ask Elder Shin for some advice on this matter. Would Elder Shin yell at me for something like this? I felt like he would certainly do something like that, yeah. Why Seol Dada pondered on what to do with the gift she received but then, having thought up something in her mind, she stared at me with those large eyes of hers. Feeling a bit pressured by that look of hers, I had no choice but to ask her while still avoiding eye contact. Why are you staring like that? Young master. Yeah. Can I give you a kiss on the cheek? W. What, thank you. Wait. I didn't say anything yet, now that I thought about it clearly, why seal? Ah, never listen to me anyways. And on the next day. The Mount Hua Sex Annual Festival, the day of the tournament had finally dawned upon us. Chapter 96 Tournament, 1, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Tournament, 1, having woken up earlier than usual, I finished my morning training a little early as well. I had been training in the morning practically every day recently. Crack. Every time I moved my bones, I could hear cracking and popping sounds setting off from them. It seemed to me that my body was in good condition. I checked every nook and cranny of my body as soon as I finished my rigorous training. All the injuries I had gotten from the previous fights had been healed by now, and only a minuscule amount of demonic chi now lay in my dantian. At this rate, I think it'll be done being purified by tomorrow at the latest. Thankfully, the demonic chi was still being purified inside of my body. Due to the purification, the total proportion of demonic chi inside of my body had been reduced by quite a bit. The plum blossom sword just had way too much demonic chi inside of her body. I could quite literally feel my chi increase, since every bit of demonic chi that was being purified was also being absorbed and added to my normal reservoir of chi. I guess this could also count as me absorbing chi again. By this point, I was no longer in a position where I needed to struggle in doing something due to a lack of chi. It was highly likely that not every bit of the demonic chi would be absorbed and converted, but most of it would still end up being added to my reservoir of usable chi, increasing my strength further. Which made me wonder, how and where did the sword master get this much demonic chi inside of her? According to the immortal healer, the sword master was currently under a spell that forbade her from speaking the details about her infliction with this ominous chi. And that knowledge gave me chills all over. Demonic Chi and this ominous spell. This was basically the same as the traces that the heavenly demon used to leave behind when it turned normal martial artists into demonic humans. The only difference among them, that I was able to figure out, was the fact that this was somewhat tolerable in comparison. Due to this feeling, I wasn't sure if the sword master met the heavenly demon or not. If the heavenly demon really gave the sword master this staggering amount of demonic Chi, which she had to suffer from for all these years, it wouldn't just stop there. At least that would be the case if it was the same as the heavenly demon of my memories. I also got a look into the traces of demonic chi that those black palace guys had in their bodies too. Mount Hua sect was probably on the move about this matter themselves, but I also wanted to find out the reason behind the guys from the black palace going as far as to fully drain the blood inside the bodies of the swordsmen from the Mount Hua sect. The ominous feeling that I was feeling in my bones made me feel that this issue was going to be very complicated indeed. Do I have to go to the hideout that the people of Mount Hua found? It would have been difficult to find the location of their hideout, 
but since the people of the Mount Hua sect had already found its location and were currently managing it themselves, it wouldn't be hard for me to find it. I should take a look there before I return to my clan. There was a very high possibility for the people of Mount Hua to already see and take care of all the traces that were left behind by the guys from the Black Palace. However, I still wanted to go there since I didn't want to wallow in this habit of hesitating in doing something any longer. If the Black Palace really has some relations to the demonic cult. They are a group that would be completely destroyed by the Murum Alliance just a few years later. Those were the thoughts I had been harboring previously, but since I had found out about the traces of demonic chi in them, I gotta do something. I still didn't wield the strength to get rid of the Black Palace with my own hands. Moreover, they weren't really weak by any means either. But I should be able to handle them in a few years. Of course, I still thought that I should mull over the necessity of me acting like this. But I didn't really have the time to think this over. I'm already done thinking about it anyways so let's just do it. Since I had already decided that I won't wallow in hesitation any longer, I couldn't just spend all my time thinking things over as I did previously. When I returned to the lodge, I found YC old Dada bringing over a towel for me with a bright smile on her cute face. It was brought to me with the intent of using it after showering. I asked her since she was here already. You woke up early huh? My eyes were fixed on YC old Dada's hair as I leaked out those words. She was currently wearing the hair accessory I had given her yesterday. And seeing that sight, I was reminded of the sensation of her soft lips against my cheek that I had felt yesterday, forcing me to rub my cheek in a fit of embarrassment. As she stared at me with that ever dot bright smile on her face, she suddenly asked. Young master, are you feeling ill? Nope, I'm fine. Then why is your face so, red? You're seeing things. I quickly passed by her and went into my room to get a change of clothes. I then proceeded to wash my face with some cold water, but strangely, the heat still lingered on my face. I can't believe that I'm still behaving like this just because of that one thing that happened yesterday. Even I found it to be absurd. I even went as far as to have stupid thoughts, such as wrapping myself with my flame chi so that the heat that was pervading my face would not be noticed by others. However, I just gave up on that thought since doing that would quite literally crush my pride as a man. After changing my clothes and washing my face, I went outside my room and was greeted with the sight of Namgung Bai. Ah, sitting on the floor. To be precise, she was dozing on the floor while sitting like that. I was about to leave her there, as it seemed that she was about to fully enter sleep mode, but it seemed like she was able to wake up somewhat from her sleepy state. I watched her in that drowsy state quietly for some time, but I soon coughed to gather my bearings and proceeded to put on the hair accessory that I had prepared for her on her hair. The problem here was that. I had never really touched a woman's hair before, in both my lives, and it only led to the unsightly result of me messing up her hair even more than it had already been before. I fucked up. I wanted to give the gift to her secretly, but what was I to do now? While I was struggling in applying this accessory to her hair, Namgung by Dada turned her head around while rubbing her eyes since I ended up making my presence known due to the mistake I made while setting up the hair accessory. MMPH, her half dot lidded eyes, filled with sleep and exhaustion, soon met mine. And Namgung by Dada proceeded to wave her thin and milky white hand softly towards me. This was her usual way of greeting me in the morning. And in the middle of her usual greeting, I was able to see the hair accessory dangling along with her messy hair. Should I tell her? How can I even tell her? I wanted to just give the gift to her secretly, but I couldn't just leave it there like this. While I was struggling to come up with an answer, Namgung by Dot Ah looked at me strangely, wondering why I was acting this way. Uh, hmm, I reached my hand out to her hair in order to retrieve the accessory, but why seal Dada suddenly found us here and spoke before I could take the accessory back. Ha. Huh. Sis also has the same thing on her hair as mine. The same thing. Namgung by Dada finally noticed the change in her body and went on to grab the hair accessory that I had failed to retrieve from her hair. Ha. Huh. 
and she immediately proceeded to look at me. She was looking at me while wondering what the item was for. I looked at Namgung by Dot Os puzzled face and responded in a quiet tone. Uh, it's just something I bought. I wanted to give it to her yesterday, but I was only able to give one to Y Seol. Ah. Uh. I immediately looked away after speaking those words to her. Why is it so hard for me to look at her when I'm simply just giving her a gift? By the way, it was not really identical to the accessory I had given to Y Seol. Ah. Uh. It was very slight, but there was still a difference between the accessories. Initially, I wanted to gift them different kinds of accessories. However, as ignorant as I was in these matters, I just ended up choosing these accessories as gifts for the girls. Why did I even bother, it might have been better if I just didn't buy anything for them at all. No matter how I spun this matter, I genuinely thought that I shouldn't have gone through with this buying them gifts. After looking at the accessory for some time, Namgung by Dot Ah shaped her hair in a certain style and placed the accessory on it in an elegant fashion. Her milky white nape became visible in the process. It was so fascinating that she looked and felt so different after slightly putting her hair up like that. Nangung by Dot Ah looked at me and asked faintly. How do I look? You look, fine. There was a word that was about to jump out of my throat by instinct, but I was barely able to hold it in. It was very hard to say the word, pretty, to her. Thankfully, Nangung by Dot Ah smiled as she seemed satisfied enough with my response regardless. I felt that she was smiling more often lately. Just by looking at her smiling figure, I genuinely got the feeling that this life was much different from my past life. I was not really able to say that this was necessarily the life I wanted, but it wasn't all that bad either. This life was good enough for me to have the thoughts of maintaining it for as long as possible, maybe forever. So that's why, I gotta do something. Only then would something change from the dystopian future that I was privy to. I realized that the forked path that had stopped and agitated me for a long time, was funnily not that much of a big deal after all. I hid away the awkwardness that was creeping up my face and asked, acting as though nothing happened. I'm going to go watch the tournament that will start soon, you guys want to come with me. Namgung by Dot Ah and Y Seol Dot Ah nodded at the same time to my question. Asterisk 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 originally, my plan was to return to the clan before the tournament even began in order to go home as early as possible, however, I decided to wait since Gu Ryungwa informed me of her desire to return to the clan. Moreover, I needed to delay the plan anyway since I ended up having some work to do in Shangxi, so I guess I should just be feeling thankful for that. But the problem here is the sword master and the immortal healer. Two cumbersome people informed me that they would be returning to the clan with us. I couldn't fathom why they decided to do that, but it was beneficial for our clan. Although the sword master had somewhat of an awkward relationship with our clan, the immortal healer, on the other hand, was welcomed by just about everywhere in the world, and that included the Gu clan as well. Father though, I wasn't too sure about what my father would think about their visits. I was planning to send a letter to the clan, informing them of the chance of our crew and the immortal healer being targeted by the Black Palace on our way back. Moreover, since I wasn't aware of the extent of the Sword Master's recovery, I also asked for backup in case of surprise attacks and ambushes when I wrote the letter. However, the letter would have been mostly written with the intention of letting them know about the entourage that was tagging along with us. Now that the matters had escalated to this extent, there was no choice for me but to send the letter now. Around 12 p.m., there wasn't even 30 minutes left before the tournament would begin. Two days for the tournament was what I heard. If I had to point out a difference between this tournament and the Nine Dragons tournament that was annually held in the Gu clan, then it would be the fact that outsiders weren't allowed to participate. It was a small tournament intended for the martial artists of the Mount Hua sect and them only. It was merely a simple festival for the sect which was why it didn't include any collaborations with other clans and sections. During the length of the tournament, outsiders were allowed to visit the tournament premise freely. Everyone was welcome to come and watch the exchange of martial combat at any time. However, 
The only problem here was the fact that the sect was located on top of an absurdly tall mountain, Mount Hua. I believe that practically no one would bother to come and watch the tournament due to the absurd location of the event. But people's passion was definitely impressive. It's crowded. Mount Hua sect may have had a good reputation and a renowned location as its base, but it didn't have the biggest land out there. But even after all that, for it to be completely filled to the brim with people is. Considering that most people attending the event were average people without a hint of chi in them, it must have been absurdly difficult for them to climb all the way up here. Furthermore, they would have had to start climbing the mountain very early in the morning to arrive by this time. Witnessing this scene truly made me realize the overwhelming amount of respect and adoration that the people from Huayin City had for Mount Hua sect. It seemed that the sect was expecting the people's arrival as well, considering all the seats they had prepared. Although the overall quality of the event was more or less a bit poor compared to the Nine Dragons Day, the crowd seemed more upbeat. I could hear the crowd speak, will the sword dragon participate this time? They were talking about young Peng. I didn't see him last year, so he must be participating this year. He wasn't even the sword dragon then, who was the winner last year. Young, something. Of course, it's someone named Young, you moron. Every third dot generation student has the surname Young. I believe you are talking about Young Sung. Oh. Yeah, Young Sung. It was something like that, who are you again? The person that barged into the conversation that was taking place among the chattering crowd was wearing the traditional uniform of the Mount Hua sect. Ednell.co When the people noticed his uniform, they became a bit more reserved. One of the men carefully asked the individual. Uh. Are you someone from the Mount Hua sect? Oh, yes, my name is Young Peng. What is he doing there now? The individual that had so blatantly barged into the crowd was surprisingly Young Peng. What's he doing there instead of preparing for the tournament? Young Peng. Young. Why that you don't happen to be the sword dragon, right? Young Peng awkwardly scratched his head at the man's question. He was basically admitting that he was indeed the sword dragon. While the man was informing the others of the sword dragon's identity with shock and jubilation in his voice, our eyes met. Oh. Young Master Gu. He ran towards me the moment he saw me. People's eyes immediately trailed along with Young Peng's figure, moving towards where he went. It seemed that everyone had figured out his identity by now. I was able to see that everyone was looking at him with a shine in their eyes. Makes sense, since it's not easy to come across one of the greatest young prodigies of the world. The five dragons and three phoenixes were the core group that would lead the future generation of martial artists. And I treated that big shot young Peng rather harshly recently. Young Peng's weird personality probably had to do a lot behind my teasing attitude towards him, but it was still undeniable that I had treated him rather harshly. Watching the scene before me made me realize once again just how impressive of a position Young Peng held in the world and in people's hearts. Young Peng greeted Namgung by Dot Ah and Y C O Dot Ah as well once he reached my location. Looking at his robust figure, I asked. Are you not participating in the tournament? Oh, no. Only the third dot generation students participate today. Then why, oh? I already forgot. But he had told me previously that he would be participating along with the second dot generation students. Is young master Gu here to see how senior sister Gu would perform? I hesitated in answering young Peng's question. It was indeed true that I was curious about Gu Ryungwa's performance, but I didn't feel comfortable saying that I had come here for my little sister. I mean, yeah, but since it's just the third dot generation students, I don't think it's necessary for me to be here. Namgung by dot ah and Y C O dot ah were unaware of this fact, but I had only come here to see a certain someone, but if things keep going like this. Oh, then it should be fine for you to wait. Ha. Huh. I heard that senior sister Gu is not participating today. I was not able to understand Young Peng's words. Master Young, 
I could have sworn that today was the day for the third dot generation students, right? That is true, but, he hesitated. It seemed to be difficult for him to answer my question. Oh. Young Pung clapped his hands after seemingly figuring out a solution. Since we still have some time. Will you follow me? After speaking those words, Young Pung trudged along a certain path and I followed him without saying a word. Soon, I ended up in the rear side of a building, having followed behind Young Pung. Judging by the uniforms that were donned by most of the people here, it seemed to be a place of preparation for the martial artists. A preparing area for the third dot generation students, huh? I could see at a glance that they were either slightly older or slightly younger than Young Pung. Some were already at the age of 20, or slightly over it, and the others were just shy of reaching 20. Putting that aside. Master Young Pung, yes, Young Master Gu. What are they doing there? Where I pointed towards, there stood muscular individuals in a row and there were even faces that were already known to me. They were the second dot generation disciples that traveled with us during our journey to Shangxi. I was able to see the sight of them hiding behind a pillar and glancing at me secretly. Do they think that they can hide themselves like that with their gigantic body? Gu Ryungwa also seemed to have a tendency of hiding like that. Did the Mount Hua sect not even teach a proper hiding technique to them? Standing beside me, Young Peng hesitated slightly before speaking. I believe, uh, they are acting this way because of senior sister Gu. Pardon. Why is Gu Ryungwa involved in all this all of a sudden? However, I was suddenly reminded of the scene of everyone being shocked once they found out I was related to Gu Ryungwa by blood on our way here to the Mount Hua sect. Is she getting bullied or something? If that were to be the case, then it would piss me off a lot. And it wasn't just because she was getting bullied for sure. Moving my feet, I trudged towards the group of muscular hiding behind the pillars. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Young Master Gu. Wait a minute, Young Peng tried to stop me, but I didn't listen to him. I'm not trying to act like an older brother now, but just looking at them made my head feel hot. As I went closer and close, I was soon able to register the words that the second dot generation disciples were uttering among them. What are they focusing on so much that they can't even notice me walking up to them? Why is she trying to participate along with the third? Generation students. I know, shouldn't we do something about it? Are they all talking about Gu Ryungwa? All of you stay quiet. She made this choice herself, and you should respect it. Even you are acting like this. How can we trust those stinky juniors, in my eyes, you are the stinkiest of them all, so just stay quiet. But, what is it that they couldn't trust about the third dot generation students, and what were they trying to do? I never heard that Gu Ryungwa was going through something like this. I guess that just shows the distance between us. It was all my fault in the end, so I was simply unable to say anything to my little sister. First things first, I calmed myself down in order to not act on my emotions. I repeatedly told myself that I just couldn't afford to cause a problem in a place like this. When I got close enough, I started speaking to the second dot generation disciples. What are you guys, then what do we do if she gets hurt? Do. ING. I had to stop my words, confusion coloring my face. The second dot generation disciples immediately turned their gazes towards me once they heard me speak. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Young Master Gu. Cold sweat immediately started flowing down my back. What did I just hear? Chapter 97. Tournament, 2, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Tournament, 2, Xin Hyun, the second dot generation disciple from the Mount Hua sect, had gotten acquainted with Gu Ryungwa for the first time around two to three years ago. It was around the time when winter had come to an end and the first vestiges of spring were starting to bud. The celestial plum blossom, Doa, brought a newcomer along with him, introducing him as the youngest member of our group. She was introduced as their senior, being the disciple of the most famous sword maiden in the world, the plum blossom sword. 
At that time the new third-generation disciples were being picked amongst the applicants. And due to that, there had been a bit of opposition from the disciples since she became a second-generation disciple right away. From the perspective of the third-generation third-generation disciples, the addition of a new girl becoming their direct senior was distasteful, to say the least, on the other hand, the second-generation disciples found it quite a bit problematic as to how they should treat Gu Ryungwa since they had to be considerate of the third-generation disciples as well. However, there was nothing they could do about this situation as the matter regarding Gu Ryungwa's admission had been decided by the Lord and the elders of the sect already. The Lord's decisions were absolute. If he decided it was correct then it must be correct, and it would be wrong if he decided otherwise. That was the place the Lord of the sect had in the heart of the disciples. A few days later, news about Gu Ryungwa's arrival to the sect reached Shinhian's ears. However, as he had to talk about some matters with the elders, he was unable to visit her right away. By the time Shin Hyun returned to the lodgings of the second-generation disciples, he was greeted with the sight of his juniors flocking around something or someone. He was able to notice them immediately since all of them wielded ginormous physiques. They are honestly a bit too big. They had been informed that their bodies would return to their normal shape once they reached a higher realm in the sex martial arts. However, the news oddly sparked looks of disappointment in some of the disciples. My wide shoulders and biceps will go away. Senior. I think I'll have to stop training in the clan's art from today onwards. Yeah. How can I give up on these rock.hard thighs? Please stop talking while flexing your chest. It makes me want to vomit while looking at those grotesque things. Those guys were really fucked in the head. The juniors hadn't we oblivious to Shinhian's arrival, so he had no choice but to cough to announce his presence. Ahem. Ahem. Usually, the coughing would have been enough to make them aware of his presence. However, the method did not work this time for some reason, leaving Shinhyun with no choice but to pass through the crowd of muscular men forcefully. In the middle of the crowd of behemoths lay a small child. Whether due to being cold or maybe the fear she felt, the child looked to be trembling incessantly. In the arms of a female disciple, a rare sight among this horde of monstrous giants lay a girl who looked at her surroundings with trembling eyes and red ears. Stand back a little. Can't you see that she's scared? The female disciple, Shin Mil, shouted out toward the crowd of ignorant behemoths. And with that shout, the group of men immediately backed away little by little. Even with them backing off, the girl looked as though she was going to cry any second now. The crowd of men was confused, not understanding what they may have done wrong here. However, the little girl's reactions were understandable, as she had been suddenly surrounded by tens of men with hulking physiques that must have come off as terrifying to the little girl. However, the men were not aware of that simple knowledge. Why is she scared? We didn't do anything. Shouldn't she feel safe when surrounded by us with biceps the size of a boulder? Yeah, she should feel that we are here to protect her, but she may not know as she's just a child. Just how did they become so ignorant and stupid? They weren't like this when they were still third-generation disciples. Shin Hyun let out a sigh of dejection as he watched the shameful display of his juniors. And in the next moment, he slowly walked toward the little girl and lowered his head to her eye level. He recalled the words of his mother, telling him that children felt more at ease when they spoke with others at the same eye level as theirs. Nice to meet you. So you are Ryungwa, right? My name is Shin Hyun. But for reasons that he was unable to comprehend, as soon as he talked to her, she hid herself further in Shinmo's arms. Is this not it? Uh. I just, Kia. Shin Hyun lifted his hand, trying his best to convey to her that he wasn't a bad guy, but the little girl just flinched and started trembling further due to his actions. Soon, even tears started flowing down her large eyes. Brother, whoa. Eldest senior brother made her cry. Wow, and he told us to back off. I swear he's the worst out of us all. W. What did I do? 
In the first place, Xin Hyun wasn't even the one who had instructed the disciples to back off. He was feeling frustrated inside, however, his frustration wasn't the important matter here, the child had already started crying. In the end, Xin Hyun never really got the chance to greet her, and the whole day was spent calming the little girl down. Of course, it was not done by the men. The other female disciples, like Shin Mil, had to step up to the task. Shin Hyun still wasn't able to hold a proper conversation with Ryungwa even after a full day. He even wondered if she was able to sleep well since her eyes had become so swollen from all the crying. Did she cry all night? Shin Hyun thought further. Why hasn't she come here yet? Usually, the direct disciple of a soul master received the privilege of being personally trained by them. However, for some reason, the sword master just never came. The Lord hadn't spoken much about this matter either, merely ordering them to take good care of the child. The problem now was how they would be able to do that. They tried their best to work together and figure out a good way to do it, but it wasn't easy. One day, one of the juniors spoke while watching Gu Ryungwa train. Big senior, about Gu Ryungwa, what about her? The junior spoke to him while donning a nervous expression on his face. From his expressions, it felt like he was conveying that he was conveying his inability to do something any longer. I don't think I can do this anymore. I feel like she would break if I even touched her. What now? At first, he wondered just what the hell this junior of his was spouting. However, just one glance at Gu Ryungwa's small and fragile body was enough for him to understand. Indeed, it really felt that she would die if she got hit with even the tiniest sliver of strength put into the strike. Moreover, even the act of getting closer to her was enough to make her cry. Even so. Yes. Move your feet just like that. Yes, you're doing good. Whoa. She picked up a sword. She picked up a sword, I tell you. Geez, what do we do? Maybe she's a genius. The juniors still seem to be enjoying themselves. Well, their enthusiasm and behavior more or less made sense to him since there were no girls that had been picked this time around while choosing the new third-generation disciples. Moreover, each and every second-generation female disciple acted more like a male than a female. Especially in the case of Shin Mil, she was so strong that Shin Hyun had to wonder if he, the eldest senior brother of the second. Generation disciples, was even capable of beating her in a duel any longer. Genders didn't matter in the realm of martial artists. Hence, their behaviors were understandable since the little girl had been so soft, so delicate, and so full of girly personality traits, however, does their attitude really help in her training? They are demons when training other juniors, so what am I even watching right now? Even though he was rebuking them for their behavior, behind their backs, Right now, Shin Hyun himself had a hard time in dealing with Gu Ryungwa. At this rate, he was even wondering if they would even be able to train her properly. Even though it was good that they all liked the newcomer girl, she would not be able to improve if she kept getting spoiled by them. And due to that reason, he chose to train her with the third-generation disciples. He believed that it'd be beneficial for her to train with other disciples her age rather than these old and muscular men. The Lord had also informed him to choose the path he felt to be the best, so Shin Hyun tried to take the route that would be the most helpful for her overall. He thought that it was okay since Gu Ryungwa despite being afraid and tearing up, tried her best to make the proper movements in her training. It was not long before a problem arose. On the fourth day since Gu Ryungwa's training along with the third dot generation disciples started, someone came running toward him with desperation in their stride and shouted while he was still in the midst of training. Eldest senior brother. What now? There had been some guys among the second dot generation disciples that were adamant about watching over Gu Ryungwa's training along with the third dot generation disciples. Even though Shin Hyun had scolded them severely for their irrational conduct, they did not give up, not even for a single instance. And thus he had no choice but to leave them be. One of the juniors, among that group, panted before speaking to him in a desperate voice. Gee. 
Gu Riyangwa fainted. What? An unexpected problem occurred during Gu Riyangwa's training. Thankfully, she woke up not too long after the fainting incident. However, the way she curled up with a look of fear on her face was disheartening. Xin Hyun had no choice but to question the third dot generation disciples after seeing her acting like that. He had to get to the crux of this matter. At his question, the juniors were only able to reply with sadness and frustration on their faces. They pleaded their innocence, responding that they had done nothing to her. They had only tried to get closer to her in order to teach her but were unable to do that since she started crying and screaming once they did that. And when one of the juniors accidentally touched her for a split second, she fainted then and there. The healers of the Mount Hua sect explained and informed that there was no problem with her body. It was rather her mind that was going through some issues. Xin Hyun was a famous individual, renowned for his swordsmanship in the martial world, but he was still weak and lost about matters such as these. Just what is the problem here? Just what is it that was making that small child feel that way? She may have been a child that had just joined their sect recently, but Xin Hyun already considered her as one of their own. The lord of the sect had declared those words and they, as his followers, wholeheartedly agreed to that statement. That child was already their dear family. Eldest senior brother, what do we do? It'd be worse for us to hastily do something at this period of time, so let's let time figure things out. The healer strictly informed them that it would be worse if they tried to get closer to her for now. And so, time passed on amidst these uncertainties. If there was one thing that Xin Hyun learned about the little girl after all this time, then it was the fact that Gu Riyangwa was not just afraid of strangers, but people in general. Especially men. Moreover, the fear exponentially increased in magnitude if that male was of a young age. Is that really fear? This was what Xin Hyun wondered at first, but after being with Gu Riyangwa for such a long time, he came to learn that her emotions were not just limited to mere fear. Her eyes held a myriad of emotions as they looked at others. Noticeably fear, resentment, despair, and an amalgam of other negative emotions blended into one and shimmering in those exhausted eyes of hers. He was also able to capture a trace of yearning in the middle of that storm of negative emotions. Thus, he was unable to just chalk it off as mere fear. Due to those reasons, he couldn't afford to leave her with the third dot generation disciples. Plus, since she looked to be uncomfortable with males, there was no choice other than to pair her up with other female disciples for training. After that incident, time gradually passed away as the seasons changed a few times. Gu Riyangwa had turned into a young lady over the years, however, the line between her heart and other people still remained, a line that she was not willing to let others cross. She seemingly got better, yet she still had a hard time getting along with the male disciples. Thankfully, she looked to be happy on some occasions at least. I assume it's because she's going to see her master. Xin Hyun heard that her master's residence was located somewhere up in the mountains. Yet, Gu Riyangwa still traveled to her residence whenever she got the time even though it would only end up making her more tired. The other disciples were forbidden to visit that place, so a few conversations inevitably ensued surrounding this topic. Most of them were just talked about the possibility that the sword master might be sick, however, none were willing to continue the conversation for long as it would only incite disaster if rumors surrounding this topic were to find their way out to the outside world. And it was around this time, some incidents occurred which led them to go outside the sect to scout out the surrounding areas. And it was then, some of the swordsmen of the started disappearing. They quickly scouted the nearby areas, but no traces could be found of the missing swordsmen, not even a single clue. Hence, they were left with no choice but to return to the clan with disappointment coloring their expressions. It was at that moment when young Peng, scouting the areas along with them, spoke about feeling something in the distance and trailed off toward the origin of that feeling. Young Peng was prone to letting his instincts dictate his actions, so Xin Hyun could only heavy a tired sigh and follow the brat. Something like this hadn't happened once or twice, after all. When they arrived at the location where he ran off, Xin Hyun met Gu Yangchen. 
The boy was unconscious when he arrived, leading Xin Hyun to believe that young Pong must have done something to him. He had almost passed out at that thought. Thankfully, nothing like that happened. It was only his misunderstanding. Talking to Gu Yangchen after he woke up, he learned that he was Gu Ryunghua's sibling. When Gu Yangchen informed him that he had come here to bring Gu Ryunghua back with him, Xin Hyun felt a sense of relief wash over his mind. He didn't know the exact reason, but Gu Ryunghua seemed to be a bit too desperate these days. And due to that, he just wanted her to take some time off from her lifestyle at the sect and relax for some days. The same thought was likely to be going on in the minds of the other disciples as well. Xin Hyun did not have much knowledge of the Gu clan, but he was still aware that the famous prodigy, Sword Phoenix was from that clan. Not to mention the Tiger Warrior. The Sword Phoenix was someone that surpassed even Young Peng, despite the monstrous talent that the boy had. Xin Hyun was never able to properly see her for himself, but it was hard to imagine how such a thing came about. It was not easy for him to believe that someone was able to surpass Young Peng who was able to make his sword blossom with plum flowers when he hadn't even reached the age of twenty yet. The problem was that something much more shocking occurred in front of Xin Hyun. When Young Peng dueled with Gu Yangchen out of nowhere, it ended in his loss. Young Peng, lost. He couldn't help but feel extremely shocked and he saw Young Peng roll on the floor and vomit out blood while Gu Yangchen just stood there and watched this scene with an impassive expression. He was just not able to bring himself to believe that this boy was able to burn those blooming flowers and disintegrate them into ashes. Flowers burning in those flames, just what the hell is this? The sight of those beautiful plum flowers filling up the whole area, and the subsequent scenes of them burning away into ashes by the flames leaking out of that small boy's body, those disbelieving scenes left Xin Hyun utterly speechless as he had put ten all his loyalty and passion to the Mount Hua sect. It was then that Xin Hyun assured himself of a fact, he would be the one to become the heavenly dragon in the future. It was possible that Gu Yangchen hadn't become famous due to his young age, however, he thought it was more likely due to the boy having never participated in the meeting of the young prodigies, the clash of the dragon and phoenix. Since the day Ping Wu Jin had given up his spot as the heavenly dragon due to becoming the young lord of his clan, the spot was handed over to the sword phoenix, as she was the greatest prodigy of the world at that time. After some time passed, he believed that it was inevitable for young Peng to inherit that spot once sword phoenix left the seat. Or at least that had been the thoughts of Xin Hyun till now, till he had seen the monster that was Gu Yangchen. He had no choice but to change his mind once he witnessed Gu Yangchen's prowess. I have nothing to say, he's a true monster. He was able to read the situation and move accordingly with no hesitation whatsoever. Not only did he have the reserves of qi and destructive strength to back up all of his movements, but he also had the speed to complement that monstrous strength and power. It was hard for anyone to believe he was so young after seeing the sight of his fully manipulating all those wild and unruly flames with utter calmness. Gu Yangchen had the power that one was only able to gain after going through numerous battles. His talent was truly monstrous. Just what kind of place is the Gu clan? He just knew of it to be a noble clan famous in the regions of Shangxi. However, for them to not only raise the sword Phoenix, but that monstrous boy as well. How scary, after some point, he started to care more about Gu Yangchen than the treasure he brought with him to deliver to the sect. Those strangely hollow and lifeless eyes that were unable to complement his sharp and fierce features were also another reason that he was fascinated with the boy. He treated his servants well without looking down at them. Moreover, a long trip like this should have been enough to make a boy his age tired and frustrated. But even then, he never stopped his training which led Xin Hyun to believe that he was a well-taught boy with a good temper. I assume he has been a good brother to Gu Ryunghua as well. Xin Hyun thought sometimes that Gu Ryunghua became like that because something may have happened in her clan. But he also remembered the sight of Gu Ryunghua crying in Xin Mo's arms while looking for her brother. However, a few years ago, that yearning appearance of her completely disappeared when she last visited her clan. Xin Hyun thought that it was helpful for Gu Ryunghua as it seemed to have led her to make up her mind about something. 
Of course, that still didn't lessen the distance between her and the other disciples, but he still had hope since she became even a little bit better than her past self. However, Xin Hyun was able to notice the change in Gu Ryunghua after Gu Yangchen came to the Mount Hua sect. After Gu Yangchen came, Xin Hyun noticed that Gu Ryunghua was making the same expressions that she once did when she first visited the clan. That complex expression mixed with myriads of emotions when she was still young and fearful. Dot resentment, fear, despair, sadness, and yearning. Xin Hyun instantly noticed that the emotions Gu Ryunghua felt were for none other than her brother, Gu Yangchen. Are my eyes seeing the truth? He decided to think that Gu Yangchen was not someone who would do such things to his own family. And that made everything harder for him as he had a keen sight when it came to identifying a person's true self. He still didn't believe he was a bad person, but he couldn't help but have doubts. Xin Hyun never liked being hesitant in anything. As a martial artist of the great Mount Hua sect, he had never learned the meaning of hesitation. And that's why he desperately desired to figure this matter out. He directly asked Gu Yangchen. Finally, he asked the boy after hesitating for a long long time. The boy responded right away without any hesitation in his voice. Yes, it's my fault. His response was firm, almost too firm. Chapter 98 Tournament, 3, you are listening at Novel Full Audio. Tournament, 3, I was going to ask just what they were talking about Gu Ryunghua behind her back like this. But judging by their reactions, it seemed to me that I had been harboring a misunderstanding all this time. Furthermore, it seemed like Xin Hyun had something to ask of me instead. He talked about the way Gu Ryunghua acted ever since she came to the Mount Hua sect all the way till now. He asked me why would such a young girl like her come to their sect while bearing an appearance as if her soul had been snatched away. The eldest second dot generation disciple proceeded to ask me questions while explaining what had happened to my little sister over the years. He queried if it had been actually my fault that my little sister ended up like this. And I only had one answer to that question. Yes, it is my fault. He conveyed a rather deep story to me, considering the fact that he had spoken to me so suddenly. This was the first time I'd heard anything concerning Gu Ryungwa's experiences during her time in the Mount Hua sect. About how she cried while looking for me. And how she harbored a fear of men. I didn't really think too much into her issues before. But it now seemed that her condition was worse than I expected. It seemed that Gu Ryungwa was not able to fully overcome her circumstances even to this day. It looked plausible that she was merely enduring everything up to now. Silence descended once Xin Hyun heard my words. However, judging from the frown on his face and the rough breaths, I was able to feel the traces of negative emotions churning inside him right now. It looked to me that he was forcefully taking my words in. I had harbored the thought that Gu Ryunghua might have been getting bullied in the sect, but thankfully it didn't seem to be the issue here, having seen this scene. It even seemed like she was getting spoiled by them. If anyone ever bullied her, then it would be me. I couldn't deny that fact. Xin Hyun had yet to utter a word, so I just decided to ask him instead. Are you not going to ask why I did such a thing? He frowned visibly at my question. I thought that I won't get an answer even if I asked. Like what he said, I was unable to answer his question. This was my business after all and I didn't feel the necessity to inform others about it. Moreover, Xin Hyun continued. I still believe in my eyes. I was unable to process just what he had seen in me for him to think that way about me. I remained silent as Xin Hyun kept looking at me. The way he looked at me wasn't enough to decipher all his thoughts, but if there was one thing that I captured from his stare then it was, the resentment he felt for me which was shimmering ever so slightly in his eyes, was seemingly due to his concern for my little sister. And so I didn't harbor bad feelings for that attitude of his. I didn't think that young Pung brought me here to show me something like this. Speaking of the devil, young Pung came from behind and respectfully greeted the second dot generation disciples. Hello, seniors. Junior young Pung. Yes, did you bring young Master Gu here? 
Yes, I did. This place is explicitly reserved for the martial artists of the Mount Hua sect and outsiders are not allowed to enter this place. You know this, don't you? I'm sorry. He was asking about senior sister Gu, so I thought it'd be best for him to talk with you directly. About senior sister Gu. Xin Hyun looked at me. His look right now was a bit different from before. It was probably due to what I said earlier. Moreover, it seemed that I wasn't allowed in this place from what I gathered from his speech with Young Peng. Even while knowing that, Young Peng still brought me to this place. He really is a daring one. Although they weren't as strict as the Murim Alliance, martial artists of the Mount Hua sect were known for listening to their superiors' orders no matter what. However, Young Peng still ignored clear dot cut orders and brought me to this location. Leaking out a tired sigh, I spoke, that I wanted to ask why my sister is fighting against the third dot generation disciples. Oh, that's, Xin Hyun was about to explain in response, but someone interrupted his speech midway. Brother. When I turned my head toward the source of that familiar voice, I saw Gu Ryungwa standing there. Shock colored her face when she saw me in this place. And when she noticed the horde of the second dot generation disciples standing here, she instantly frowned. Guys. Oh, we've been caught. It's all eldest senior brother's fault. What kind of person just blatantly talks to someone in the open when trying to conceal themselves? Gu Ryungwa. Eldest senior brother told us all to come here, we didn't do anything of our own volition. You guys really are going to sell out your eldest senior brother here. What great people you guys are. You pieces of dog shit. Speaking with utter embarrassment coloring his face, Xin Hyun looked like someone who was already used to these things. Seeing this scene, Gu Ryungwa spoke. I told you not to come here, he quickly tried to explain himself to her. I'm sorry, these guys were begging me so much, what the? He was the one that was talking about us selling him out just now and yet he sells us out right away, what are you so surprised about? This isn't the first time he did something like this now, is it? The disciples, talking behind his back, had no choice but to stop once they saw Xin Hyun growl at them menacingly. Gu Ryungwa continued watching without saying a thing. Seemingly, she had a lot to say about this matter but she was holding it in. Soon, she leaked a sigh as she lowered her head. Thank you for worrying about me. But I hope that you guys wouldn't worry so much. Her voice was cold and rigid as she delivered that statement. Her behavior toward her seniors could have been seen as nothing but disrespectful. And due to that, I glanced toward the other disciples' face. Ha, huh, however, they didn't seem angry or displeased. Instead, how should I say this? Shock. Touched. Something like that. W. Whoa, she thanked us. She didn't look away, nor did she step back even once. Ha. Huh. What's going on? Am I going to die tomorrow or something? It more or less started to look scary at this point. What is up with their insane reactions? Xin Hyun kicked away the disciples, that seemed to have lost their minds, and walked toward Gu Ryungwa. Will you be fine? She just nodded her head in response. As always, I will respect whatever choice my family makes. Yes. Thank you. I think this is the first time I'm getting a thanks from you, what a strange feeling. I'm sorry. No need for an apology. Whether it is you thanking us or apologizing to us, we didn't do anything for you to deserve any of that from you. A light and thin smile graced his lips as she looked at Gu Ryungwa. She had to turn her head away, unwilling to bear his gaze any longer. I'll take those idiots away now as it seems like there isn't too much time left, I hope you get a satisfactory outcome for yourself. The other disciples started to once again talk behind Shin Hyun's back after hearing their conversation. However, the moment Shin Hyun made a fierce face, almost akin to a ferocious tiger, they immediately shut their mouths and ceased all speech. I didn't know that he was capable of making such a face. Even I got a little scared after seeing him make that face. What are you doing here, brother? 
Immediately, I looked at Gu Riyamwa when I heard her question. It seemed that she had gotten used to calling me brother by now. And that fact, was problematic for me. Do I really deserve to be called that? That was the only thought I had in my mind. Immediately erasing such thoughts, I spoke to Gu Riyamwa. I heard that you are fighting against the third dot generation disciples. Oh. I was wondering why, but I somehow ended up all the way here. Xin Hyun had already departed from this place along with the others. And seeing that Young Peng was nowhere to be found, it seemed that he was brought along with them. Gu Riyungwa responded after some time. You know, I just thought that I should fight where I belong. I understood the reason behind those words. The current Gu Riyungwa was nowhere near the skill level of the other second dot generation disciples. Most of the Mount Hua sect's fighting force consisted of second dot generation disciples, and Gu Riyungwa definitely didn't belong in that category. Though even the third dot generation disciples might give her a pretty hard time. Gu Riyungwa may have consistently trained hard, but that didn't change the fact that the other third dot generation disciples might have done the same as well. Though I didn't really have any idea if they really did since I had only ever seen Young Peng among the third dot generation disciples. Anyways, if she really did decide to fight against the third dot generation disciples for such a reason, there was nothing left for me to ask. Moreover, Gu Riyungwa had already been given approval from the higher dot ups of the sect, which was basically why she was able to participate with the third dot generation disciples in the first place. Young Peng against the second dot generation disciples and Gu Riyungwa against the third dot generation disciples, huh? it looked like they had switched places. Similarly to how Young Peng used force to go through his circumstances, Gu Riyungwa was someone to rely on her determination to do the same. Good luck. Immediately, her head lifted as she heard my words. A sliver of surprise seemed to have marked her face. Why are you making that face? I, didn't expect to hear those words from you, brother. And I expect that you hear those words a lot, don't you? It seems like you get spoiled a little. I was referring to the seniors of the second dot generation disciples cheering Gu Ryunghua on, almost constantly, as I mentioned those words. They are just weirdos. It seemed that she was feeling a bit pressured by those muscular men. Thinking about it, even I would feel the same if a horde of muscular dudes suddenly started saying our Yangchen is the best on a daily basis. I was sure that I would be so weirded out that I would constantly hide from them. Still, it didn't seem that she disliked such behavior. She was just feeling a bit pressured by their kindness. Anyways, I'm done here now. I'll be going now. Wait. I had to stop my steps, as I was about to leave, at Gu Riyungwa's words. When I looked at her, wondering why she said that, she came closer to me and even grabbed my clothes. I couldn't help but feel a sliver of shock pass through my mind at her act. Since she used to have a hard time even looking in my general direction before. You, the tournament, are you coming to watch it? That's why I'm here after all. Is Sis, also here? I assumed that she was speaking about Namgung by Dot Ah when she said Sis. Namgung by Dot Ah was probably sitting on the stands along with Y C O Dot Ah by now. I quickly responded to Gu Riyungwa's question. Yeah she's here, I think they are in the spectator seats right about now. What about you, brother? I, indeed, I had come here to watch Gu Riyungwa's fight. However, I felt quite a bit of embarrassment to directly say that I had just come here to watch her fight. In the end, I just leaked out a fake cough and spoke in a soft tone. I'll be watching. She immediately released my clothes from her grasp as she heard those words. It seemed that she was still having a hard time being near me since I could notice her slightly trembling hands even as she distanced them away from me. Why did she go as far as to grab my clothes when she has such a hard being near me? She held on to her trembling hands and smiled a bitter smile. It seems like I still have a hard time huh? I'm sorry. Don't do it if you have a hard time with it. You don't need to go that far. 
Those were the words that I had to desperately hold off from leaking out. The young Gu Ryungwa was trying to overcome her traumas by herself. Her story had already become far different from the one I knew of in my past life. Right. I'll be watching. Every time I saw her act like that, I only felt guilt and regret. The type of regret that made me think that I shouldn't have done those things to her and that I should be treating her differently from now on. She soon left after informing me that she had to start preparing for her fight now. I, too, walked away after watching her back, as she drifted away into the building, for some time. I returned to the crowded streets, a plethora of complicated thoughts tagging along with me in the process, and reunited with my party. It was rather easy to find them since I just had to look for Namgung by Dot Ah. Expectedly, she was in a location where many eyes were trained on her. She was still wearing the cover over her face, but many people still looked at her due to her unique presence and overall atmosphere. Namgung by Dot Ah was leaning on Y C O Dot Ah with a somewhat exhausted face, however, she immediately lifted her tired face and started moving. It looked to me that she was searching for something. Her eyes that were drifting on the surroundings were now targeted toward me. Once she affirmed my presence, she waved her hand. Sitting next to her, YC Old Dada also waved her hand toward me as well. How did she find me when I'm this far away? Perhaps she used her chi. I don't think she would do that, so is it just a coincidence? Probably a coincidence. With those pointless thoughts, I walked over to them and noticed that there was an empty seat just next to theirs. It seemed that they had saved a seat for me. YC Old Dada soon looked at me and asked, Young master, where were you? I went to go see my sister, I heard that she's fighting today. Nangung by Dot Ah immediately reacted after hearing my words. She's, fighting today. That's what I heard. Her lips immediately flinched at my words, seemingly trying to say something to me. In the end, however, she just turned her head around without speaking. Her gaze was directed toward the fighting arena. I didn't need to ask why she was looking there. The noisy crowd also started to quiet down soon enough. Everyone's eyes were trained on the arena. In the arena quiet and desolate arena, a sliver of light pink leaves started to manifest into the air not too high above the ground. The leaf, shining with an odd light, soon fell on the ground as though blown away by an unknown breeze. And as soon as the leaf touched the ground, swoosh. A light pink aura instantly swept over and covered the entire arena. At a glance, I was immediately able to tell that an immense amount of chi was billowing in the arena. The aura that stormed inside the arena like a raging tempest, exploded in an instant and disappeared, merely leaving behind slight traces of its havoc. When the aura disappeared, the leader of the Mount Hua sect, Celestial Plum Blossom was seen standing at the front line of the arena, and behind him, stood the third dot generation disciples that would be participating today. The moment the crowd witnessed their appearance, they started cheering with loud noises. Cheese. The celestial plum blossom probably made an appearance for all the people that trekked all the way up the great Mount Hua to see this tournament, however, it was still shocking that he didn't seem the least bit tired even after using that staggering amount of chi just for an appearance. When the celestial plum blossom raised his hand, Everyone became quiet as if their silence had been planned beforehand. Every year, you people come all the way up this tall mountain for this little event. I thank you all immensely for your participation. With every step the celestial plum blossom took, it seemed like there was an unknown wind blowing from who knows where. Is he also using his chi? There's nothing more boring than some old man talking for no reason, so I'll be taking my leave now. Please watch how our children put their all into this humble festival of swords. The celestial plum blossom then came off the arena and went somewhere after delivering those short and concise words. The sword dragon, Young Pung may have been a young prodigy. However, since the celestial plum blossom was a master that was famous throughout the world, many seemed to be disappointed that they weren't able to hear more of his words. But it was better for me since that meant that the tournament would proceed faster as a result. 
When the celestial plum blossom sat in the elder seating area, the third dot generation disciples on stage started their preparations. Two disciples walked out of their formation and soon stood opposing each other with wooden swords. Wooden swords huh? I heard that the second dot generation disciples would be using real swords. The man, seemingly the judge of this match, looked at both of the disciples, checking if they were fully prepared for what was to come. Begin. Along with that shout, enhanced with chi, the two charged at each other, swords drawn. Chapter 99. Tournament, 4, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Tournament, 4, the tournament that had begun just a little past midnight was shaping up to be an event that would be underway for a long time. As the third dot generation disciples prepared for an extensive period of time for this day, they were all serious about the tournament. And since all of them belonged to the same sect, their sword arts were more or less identical to each other. They knew each other too well which was it was taking so long for them to achieve triumph over the other. To some, it may feel a bit lame for a match to go on for so long, but the heat in the crowd didn't seem to have died off. These reactions are crazy. They all seem to be enjoying it. Although the crowd was essentially small in size, just their excitement and enthusiasm alone were enough to rival the crowds that watched events that the Muram Alliance usually hosted. I, however, couldn't help but feel bored. Is it because I've been spending my time with Young Pung a lot lately? Since I could only compare these martial artists to Young Pung, their sword arts really seemed extremely poor in my eyes. The flexibility they wielded was severely lacking compared to the real swordsmen of the Mount Hua sect. Moreover, the flow and reaction time of their qi usage was far too disappointing as well. To put it in a brutally honest way, I could knock these punks out in just one blow. Even young Pung would be able to do the same, not to even mention someone like Namgung by Dot Ah. I guess that's why they pitted Young Pung against the second dot generation disciples. Now I was able to fully understand the reason behind that decision. It wasn't that they were lacking. They were martial artists from the Ten Sect Alliance, and on top of that, they were disciples of the prestigious Mount Hua sect. They were certainly stronger compared to other kids their age. However, the reason behind this underwhelming feeling I had of them was simply because the people that I had met recently could easily overpower them. It makes sense since it's not common for someone who isn't even at the age of 20 to reach the realm of a first-rate martial artist. Geniuses like Young Pung and Namgung by Dot Ah were extraordinary ones and an outlier to this overview. I glanced at Namgung by Dot Ah, wondering if I was the only one that found this tournament boring. I was unable to see her face clearly since she still had her veil on, but I was able to notice a strange movement just then. I couldn't help but ask. You yawn just now, right? Immediately, she flinched due to my question and averted her gaze. Along with the turning of her head, I could see her meticulously tied hair wave. Glancing at the hair accessory she had put on her hair, for some time, I turned toward Y C O D Ah. Unlike me and Namgung by Dot Ah, YC Old Dot Ah was watching the fight with a distinct glint in her eyes. Is it fun for you? Yeah. She responded without hiding the emotions she felt about watching the fight. I guess it is different for her since she is not seeing it with a mentality like mine. Whoa. Shifting my gaze toward the arena as I heard the cheering of the crowd, I immediately noticed that one wooden sword had fallen to the ground. I lost. You did well. The winner gripped the loser's shoulder as a sign of assurance. It seemed like the one to lose had been a disciple that was on the young side compared to his opponent or may have entered the sect later. At that moment, I heard the murmuring of the people around me. It seems like they improved way more than last year. To see that they changed this much in just one year, it makes me proud. This is what the Mount Hua sect is all about. Yup. It was certainly different from what I felt about the match. I guess it was just because they were normal individuals and not martial artists. Am I different now? Am I thinking that I am in the same realm as them just because I absorbed some chi after I was given a second chance in life with regression? 
If that were to be the case, then I definitely needed to change my thought process. These thoughts would surely come biting back one day. I had to be extra careful since I'd experienced something similar before. While I was organizing my thoughts, Nangung by Dada spoke. She came out. I had to open my eyes wide at those words. I heard the murmuring of the people surrounding me as well. What the, there was a girl amongst the disciples. There wasn't one last year, is she someone new? No way, even the richest families tried to put their kids into the Mount Hua sect, yet they were rejected right away as they weren't accepting any more disciples right now. A girl was standing in the midst of the arena with a proper posture while wearing the symbolizing white attire of the Mount Hua sect, holding a wooden sword in her hand. Along with the tied black hair, she was calming her breath and taking in her surroundings. Even in the midst of the crowd that surrounded her, the girl remained calm and composed. Or was that just her pretending to be calm, it could be possible that she had a lot of thoughts running through her mind right now. I just continued to watch, my gaze affixed on her form. Soon, she pulled out the wooden sword and went into a battle stance. Before the duel began, the two opposing disciples of their designations. I am Young Jean, a third-generation disciple of the Mount Hua sect. I'm Gu Ryungwa, a second-generation disciple of the Mount Hua sect. Their voices weren't loud, but it was loud enough for people to hear and the content of their speech shocked them to no end. After they were done with their introductions, begin. Along with reverberating shout, enhanced by the usage of qi, Gu Ryungwa's duel began. Asterisk 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 asterisk, what the, a second dot generation disciple. How is that possible when she looks so young? This is the first time I've seen her. Maybe she isn't even officially part of the sect yet, considering she had just introduced herself today. I heard the murmurs of the people again. I tried to ignore them, but their voices still resonated in my head. Gu Ryungwa tried her utmost to input all her focus on her opponent, standing parallel to her on the other side. An annoyed expression was displayed on his face. It seemed that he was a bit offended by his opponent. Probably, the reason wasn't due to him being pitted against his senior, since he probably didn't even acknowledge her as a senior in the first place. It would be more along the lines of him being disappointed by this match. Up. As he was unable to have an honorable and worthy duel due to getting matched up against a little girl. The emotions he was displaying were certainly negative in nature. Gu Ryungwa's breathing started getting rougher. I would like to participate in the first day of the tournament. She really wanted to participate along with the other second dot generation disciples, but she still expressed her desire to participate with the juniors, suppressing her greed. It'd only make her seem stubborn and foolish if she didn't. This concerned her pride as a disciple of her master, however, she still chose to give it up, in the end. Shin Hyun asked with worry if Gu Ryungwa was really fine with this decision and she just nodded her head with an astute determination on her face in response. Many meanings were mixed into the question that he had asked her. And she was aware of those meanings. Slowly, she lifted her wooden sword and trained her gaze on her opponent. I'm scared, she was still scared. To the point that she wanted to run away here and now. The frown on her opponent's face and the sharpness of his gaze were equally scary and frightening to her. It became hard for her to breathe as she was reminded of the person that never turned his back even though she had been crying and screaming to him for help. Begin. As soon as the match began, her opponent charged at her straight. He swung his sword, intent on finishing this farce of a match quickly. However, there was next to no power in his strike. As though he was intent on going easy on her. Gu Ryungwa clenched her teeth after witnessing that scene. She swung her sword and responded in tandem. All her training, the hard training she did every single day, was for this very moment, for her to blossom. She was not able to keep count of just how many times her hand had ripped apart and bled through the intense training. On top of that, having a nosebleed was just an everyday thing for her. All of this came from her will to make those beautiful plum blossoms blossom in her sword. Smack. 
Gu Riyunglu's opponent, Young Jin, became shocked after his attack had been blocked by her. He didn't even consider for a second that his attack would be blocked. She was still lacking when it came to pure strength, so she decided to change the direction of her opponent's attack rather than fully block it head dot on. As she drew a crescent with her sword, shifting her body in tandem, Young Jin's sword strike bounced off in response. That provided her with an opening to strike. She swung the sword at the opening that was created, but Young Jin managed to block her strike. I was late. She had hesitated for a moment. Her fear of using the full extent of her sword strikes had been the problem. Young Jin regained his posture and composure after seemingly learning something just from that one clash alone. It seemed that he won't be letting down his guard any longer. Phew, her breathing was still trembling ever so slightly. The reason Gu Riyunghua wished to make her sword blossom with plum blossoms was for her master, the plum blossom sword. She wanted to provide peace of mind to her master before her eyes closed forever. That was why she maintained an extremely torturous training regimen while cutting off even her sleep. However, now that she thought about it, it wasn't possible to make oneself blossom so easily. Furthermore, when the sword master woke up and started to regain her health, Gu Riyunghua seemed to have lost her goal and couldn't help but feel hollow inside. What reason do I have to learn how to use a sword then? She was happy that the sword master became healthy and was able to train together with her once more, but Gu Riyunghua still didn't know what her goal in life was. After noticing this absent-minded state of hers, the sword master spoke. What you wish to channel in your sword is something that you must find by yourself. To find the meaning of the sword. That was the very first homework that the sword master gave to her disciple, Gu Riyunghua. Giving her such important homework, it was a first for the sword master, who taught her step by step by not giving her the correct answer right away. Swish. Young Jin's sword skimmed past Gu Riyunghua's hair. Unlike before, his attack had an exemplary amount of power channeled into them and even his swings were firm and heavy. Whether he was being fully serious or not, it at the very least seemed like he was putting a little bit of effort into the duel than before. Gu Riyunghua maintained her calmness so that she didn't feel pressured by the sword that was being swung right in front of her eyes. If not the blooming plum blossoms, then what must I put into my sword? That was the thought that revolved more than a thousand times over in her head. What was etched on her desperation that had been swept away? Was it revenge? The desire for revenge she harbored against her family for what they did to her beloved mother. And the resentment she felt for her brother that simply discarded her. Was it that intent that she had to channel into her sword then? Ugh. Gu Riyunghua's body went through a tremor due to being overpowered by her opponent's sword strike, as she tried to block Young Jin's sword. His attack simply continued becoming harsher and harsher with time. The sword master's way of sword focused on the defensive aspect rather than offense. She said that even when learning the same style of sword art, they could still look different as each person channeled a different meaning or intent into their swords. Don't be scared you can simply make it all flow away. Ha! Huh. Young Jean spoke, shocked by what was seeing. The attack he believed to be unblockable had been flowed and redirected to a different path by Gu Riyunghua. Her rough breaths also started to calm down further and further. I don't want to put such things in my sword. The painful memories that made her afraid and terrified still remained, but she didn't wish to simply choose revenge to overcome them. She still resented her brother, Gu Yangchen. But even so, even after everything, she still harbored hopes for him once again after seeing the change in him. Once more, her eyes chased after him and all her focus gathered on her brother. She felt foolish. Even after going through all that pain, she didn't change from when she had been tumbling on the floor, crying out for her brother, waiting for him to return and show her affection and console her. Then she remembered the words she spoke with desperation lacing her tone without even noticing them before they fully came out. Can we be like before? She said with hope and desire in her heart. If Gu Yangchen said yes in response back then. 
It was possible that she would have tried to put those words into action while pretending that nothing happened in the past. It was her way of escaping reality. It was as though, she thought if she lived on while pretending that nothing bad happened, it would make her feel better. But would that really make me feel better? She would certainly be able to forget that despairing moment. It was possible that she could forget her painful past completely. It would make her feel relief and ensure the feeling of escaping from her past. As though living while pretending to not know about anything. Living while deceiving oneself. However, even Gu Ryungwa knew that wasn't what she desired. Even while deflecting all of the attacks, Gu Ryungwa's eyes were affixed to the spectator seats. It won't take her long to find his visage. As there were only so many people out there who wore a red uniform and had sharp, fierce eyes. As expected, she found Gu Yangchen right away, sitting in the midst of the boisterous crowd. When she looked at him, she had trouble keeping herself from bursting out into laughter. He had spoken with a careless expression on his face that he was just there to watch her perform, but for him to don such a worried expression. She wondered just what happened to her brother in the span of just a year that he changed so much. She also knew that her brother felt guilty and apologetic toward her just by taking a glance at the emotions that stirred in the depth of his eyes. She also knew that he didn't apologize to her even though she wished to. However, Gu Ryungwa never complained to Gu Yangchen for not saying those words. They were already far too distant from one another for something like that. And she was sure that her brother wouldn't try to lessen the distance between them either. After thinking till there, Gu Ryungwa felt like she had an inkling of what she wanted to do. Swoosh. An attack that pierced through a careless opening, connected with Young Jin's shoulder. Dil Viko she had swung her sword lightly, intending to not do any big damage to her opponent. However, the important thing here was the fact that her attack still landed on her opponent. Young Jin's face fired up almost immediately. His pride had definitely been hurt by that action and her consideration to not hurt him. Even though he was looking at her with such hostility, Gu Ryungwa chose to remain calm. She focused her powers on her feet. The chi that flowed, starting from her abdominal region, the dantian, spread throughout her whole body and enhanced the strength that she channeled to her legs. If there was a distance between them, all she had to do was just close it. She decided that if he won't be coming close to her, then she'll just go over to him. If she was unable to return to the life she had before, then she just needed to make a new one with her brother. She would feel resentment and still shout out in anger and vehemence. She would cry due to the deep scar that would probably never wash away from her heart, but she still wished to forgive him for everything. If it wasn't the plum blossoms she wanted to channel in her sword, then this intent was all she wished to channel within her martial art. Gu Ryungwa moved fluidly in between Young Jin's sword strikes. The blooming of a talent transpired just like that. She was disadvantaged when it was a matter of physique and the strength and accumulation of her chi. However, for some reason that even she was unaware of, Gu Ryungwa felt no fear, not even for a second. She deflected all the attacks that came her way and inched closer toward him step by step. Due to that action of hers, a feeling of shock and bewilderment gradually appeared in Young Jin's mind. His thoughts of easily defeating her and participating in a real duel with his next opponent were soon crushed into oblivion. Young Jin had been serious about this fight from the moment his first strike was deflected. What in the world, to say that something like this was unbelievable, didn't apply to young Jean as he had experienced the same thing once before. It was not just in the case of young Jean but for each and every third dot generation disciple. Young Pung was just like her when he was young. He came in much later than the other disciples, but he became an official swordsman of the Mount Hua sect in just a few years. Due to that fact, all of the third dot generation disciples felt immense hatred and jealousy for him. A sword that contained emotions other than the intent of the swordsman could never be firm. That was also the case for young Jean right at this moment. When Gu Ryungwa saw that his movements gradually deteriorated, she didn't let this opportunity go out of her hands. The duels that she fought against Namgung by Dot A really helped her in this moment. 
to never let go of that chance, that opportunity. She deflected Young Jin's sword away, creating an opening for herself, and struck at his wrist. Ag. Along with the scream, his wooden sword rolled on the ground of the arena. At the same time, Gu Ryungwa's sword was pointing at Young Jin's neck. The silent crowd focused on the ongoing duel, broke their silence and started cheering loudly at the scene. As the duel came to a close, Young Jin, with desperation marring his face, picked up the fallen sword while lowering his head. I lo. Suppressing the frustration and rage he felt, Young Jin was just about to admit his defeat to Gu Ryungwa. However, he was unable to speak further when he glanced at her face. Gu Ryungwa was smiling. Unlike the frowning face that she always donned. Uncharacteristically, she now had a bright smile blooming on her innocent face. As though conveying that she really had a good time while fighting with young Jean. She spoke while looking in his direction. You did well. Ah. Yes. With a stutter, he responded back. Soon, she made her way out of the arena. Swiping the sweat off his forehead, Young Jean kept staring toward Gu Ryungwa that was walking away from the ground. For some reason, he felt like he would remember that smile of hers for the rest of his life, charmed by its innocence and beauty. Asterisk 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 the end of the duel was marked with the boisterous cheers of the crowd. This duel had been too much of a shock for several factors. She won. Nangung by Dada spoke, sounding like she had been shocked by the outcome. I wasn't able to see her face but I was more or less sure that she felt that way. It was the same for me, after all. I could have never even imagined Gu Ryungwa winning a fight in the tournament. What happened? It was way harder for me to figure this out since I had memories of the Gu Ryungwa from my past life. Gu Ryungwa hadn't been a martial artist whose fame had spread throughout the world. But her appearance just now, just having a bit of knowledge about martial art was enough to let anyone know of what transpired here. Just how much potential that Gu Ryungwa showed with this duel. As if to prove that statement, I looked at where the elders of the sect were seated and immediately saw that they were talking about her as well. What she showed just now wasn't possible for someone that had just reached enlightenment in the midst of a fight. It was as if, she released something she had been suppressing till now. As she was walking down the stage our eyes met by chance. She looked in this direction and waved her hand. Looking at her like that, I realized that something fundamental had changed in her. When I looked at Gu Ryungwa that was smiling so brightly, I felt that a rusting part of my inner self seemed to have melted away. Even when I had met her earlier, it seemed like Gu Ryungwa had been stuck on something that was hindering her psyche. However, it now seemed that she had managed to escape from that hindrance during this duel. While I'm still stuck even after regressing. Unlike me, that young girl found her way out all by herself. Unlike her incompetent elder brother. Cute. I smirked after hearing Namgung by Dot Os voice. So suddenly. Her smiling face is so cute. Yeah. It's like how the young master smiles. I don't think so. Hey. Nangung by Dot A refuted why see old Dot A's words in a strict and blunt tone. I mean she wasn't wrong, but I still feel extremely shitty. While nagging at Nangung by Dot A, I looked toward Gu Ryungwa and proceeded to wave my hand in response. That's that, but, I thought about Gu Ryungwa's opponent. I remember that he was staring at her like a death ray after the duel ended. I got to ask Young Pung later on what that sucker's name is. I wasn't going to do anything severe, but I didn't like him in the least.